understand the game. It has to be Fuchsia. Comes from Oklahoma, brought 30 students, half from China, and you're taking in your very first baseball game. What do you think, Fuchsia? We love Rangers. We had a great time. We had Nacho. We have just a wonderful, fun time. And go Rangers. There we go. Can you say, go Rangers, beat the White Sox in Chinese, huh? Yes. E-R-7. Good day, mate. Here's the back. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> what a trio. What'd you say a minute ago? Like, you don't know what you have till it's gone? or Yeah, but then I quickly realized, I mean... We did know. <laughs> we did know. We were playing the audio every other day. Yeah, Jim Knox, man. What a treat. It was the whole thing. And it's... I like the broadcast now, but back then they were just freaking ripping and running. There's cookies. Cookies. Buzz is up there. Greaves being Grieve. Like the two old men from the Muppets and then Knox out there. Cause I, yeah, I like Josh Loon a lot. Was that the golden age, though? Buzz for comedy. I don't know. That's what I mean. I don't know how much I learned about the game, but Buzz threw like no two no hitters. Isn't that hard to believe? It is. <laughs> it is. If you look at him or listen to him, this guy was once mowing down major leaguers. Of course, the major leaguers were Tom Grieve. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? I'm just saying he's not the biggest dude. He's not you know Canseco or McGuire. It was a different day it was. back when they told you to not do weight training because it would hurt you. It would, yep. You'd get too bulky. You'd, you'd uh, waste your energy. Boy, that really helped me to not get into weights. All it took was, like, my dad once said that, too, when we first went and tried, like, Nautilus. You know what <laughs> Nautilus is? Yeah, the machine? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I went to the gym with my dad, and he's like, yeah, you don't want to really – lift too much because you'll get too bulky and i was like okay yeah. like that's all you had to say to me and dan was like oh, i guess i'll put down this 400 pound deadlift that i was about to <laughs> rip out right but so like if i'm not supposed I'm to not, do it then... i'm not too bulky then you just go sit in a sauna it worked yeah yeah 30 minutes swim naked have a cigarette pee on the rocks in the sauna yeah boy that really caused the ruckus at the club <laughs> but not admit <laughs> yeah. we did that if we admitted that, that would have been big trouble. Like, no, it wasn't us. Why would we do that? It must have been one of these other adults. <laughs> Boy, it stunk. Well, yeah. Well, it's, you're vaporizing piss. <laughs> so for those uh, just listening to audio, which is kind of my game, I'm an audio file. Mm-hmm. Heads and tails. Which is one of the better files you can be. <laughs> yeah, it's up there. <laughs> um, but we are also putting out this show on YouTube today. So you can go check out www.youtube.com slash, <laughs> or is it at the Dumb Zone? Slash little, and at. Slat and then, sla- okay, whatever. Just search Dumb Zone on YouTube. Which is, which is located at www. Right. <laughs> so we have a few videos to play for you today, but hopefully the audio will speak for itself as well. Um, on today's program, we have a lot. I don't think we'll get to it all. I don't think we'll get to half of it. We will have to carry some of it in through Business Wednesday mm-hmm. and then on to Audio Thursday. Uh, we will have some guests in here, our first ever guests in our brand new, possibly long term studio, which we like a lot. And Video Man will respond to, well, he won't respond like right there, but he will respond. He will take action if you put some comments that get in his head. Apparently, he saw a Facebook comment that said, the last time we did a video here, which was last week, this backdrop had some creases in it. So he got here earlier today and steamed it. 
Yeah, and the funny part about that is uh, last week when we were here, as we were getting ready to roll, he's like, uh, the last thing I wasn't able to do was steam the backdrop. And there right, was he was so he was planning on it. There was a steamer right here. I'm like, what? The, who cares? Was it a Cleveland steamer? Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's but lo and behold, someone commented, and then he he steamed it out. Yeah, but he was actually planning on doing that anyway. But he was pissed that correct someone actually did care. Well, I guess yeah, it's it's just weird. Um, but yeah, get in his head. Tell him what you don't like. It'll be changed the next show. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you have to do. Just make a uh, a comment. Um, what else do we have going on? Oh, speaking so, of Thursday show. What? Opening day. Brother. Oh, you want to promote the opening day show? Yeah, yeah, you just mentioned Thursday show, so I figure it's a nice time. Yeah, someone invited us to their tailgate inside a RV. It's. I think they they bought an old school bus and they completely redid the inside. Wow! Yeah. And so they took out some. That's of the like rows. a dream. I know. Have you ever thought of that when you were a kid? Of course. Or like I, I wanted to live in it. Didn't that? Isn't there a movie where the kid died in a bus, or what happens in Into the Wild? I never saw it or read it. Uh, is there a bus component? Yeah, I think there is a bus component. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, they completely redid the inside of the bus, and there's tables, and it's pretty badass. So yeah, Have we're you seen be, it. Uh, he he sent me pictures of it when he okay. booked it. But yeah, we'll be in lot D from I guess noon to three. If anyone is tailgating out at the ballpark for opening day, come by and see us. Look for the bus. <laughs> Look for the tricked out bus in lot D. Yeah. That's great, man. Yeah, it'll be fun. They party pretty hard. I told them I don't know what we'll be down for, but they said we could broadcast on top of the bus if we wanted That's to. That's the play. 100%. I mean, I've talked to people that said they partied hard before, and it means like a beer after work. Yeah. Yeah. So. We got to be on top of the bus. If that's possible, that's a You want to do that? Hell yes. It'll be like two degrees out. This is why I, I want to be I, in the I told, bus. I told them I didn't know yet. I want in the bus because <sighs> I knew we'd be split. I want you on top and me in the bus, and then we'll just You'd be a power bottom. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like that's less work. That's it, what I'm what all about. What do you mean two degrees? I think the high is seventy three, seventy three. With the wind, then the wind chill factor. Wind, not seven, ten, ten miles, ten miles per hour, nothing. What are you looking at the Farmer's Almanac? Anyway, uh, speaking of baseball, yeah, so uh, Thursday. Oh, and you know what? I can't I, get anything done around here. I told you I talked to— You don't want to travel. You don't want to be cold ever. I told uh, I told you I talked to Raymond from E6 Sportswear mm-hmm. last night, and uh, he's got a lot of ideas. But one of their ideas that he and Ty Walker have put together is Dumb Zone-themed— I don't know how to say this, but it's like— it looks like a Rangers jersey, but it'll it's our thing on it. Like you know how you hate the Tony Romo football Mavs jersey. It's what I hate like is that. when Cuban wears a football jersey themed to the Mavs, who are noticeably a basketball team. Anyway, I don't think it's up yet though, so I don't know why I'm promoting it because I'm bad at stuff. Uh, but that's going to be available for some merch and DumbZoneMerch.com. That'll get you right to all of our. St- Stuff. Will it really? Yeah. Because I, my internet's got a problem. I went to dumbzone.com. I can't find it. Anyway. Uh, Mine's humming along. <laughs> also on today's... Pro- oh, speaking of baseball, though, you may know that I am in a fantasy baseball league. Mm-hmm. And I'm one of the best owners that you could be because I hire a GM and I kind of let him do his thing. Mm-hmm. And we've had great success with, baseball this, man. with this formula. So I will now ask my general manager, how did the draft go last night? Because I got an email, which, as you know, like Sportsline will. Oh, Remember when I did the football draft and I thought I killed it and it gave me a D minus? It grades you? And then I was like eighth in the league out of yeah. 10. Yeah, like it, it was right. I had a D minus. And I was bitch. I was bitching about it because I told you I had the best team ever. Yeah, but they were right. It actually was, was a terrible team. <laughs> What'd we get? Well, I, I'll just say up front, I don't think we did as well as we have in years past. Uh, we kind of react to how the draft is going. Mm-hmm. Um, That's just smart. You got to be agile. 
Yeah, like last year, uh, Ronald Acuna, the MVP, fell to us in the third round. You know, we were able to get him. Got Trey Turner late. Uh, this one, this this draft was a little more difficult. Where did Otani go? Like fourth pick. Mm. And we got Otani in like the fourth round last year. That's a good GM right there. Yeah, he's not even pitching this year. Really? No, but that's that's actually kind of easier for the owner. He's not pitching? Or, no, I don't think gov- so. Governor. No. Um, not oh. at least until but, way late, if if at all. Yeah. But when you would draft him in years uh, previous, you would have to decide what do, we, oh, do what you want to hit or pitch. Week. Okay. And then, I don't know, I, I didn't like that at all. Because <laughs> it's you'll see him pitch a great game, and, and, and he's hitting and or whatever. Mm-hmm. Or I, I had him at pitcher for a long time last year, but he was... He hit, what, 45 home runs? So, yeah, that was always the difficult play. But, yeah, it'll be easier if he's just a hitter. So what's the grade? Well, they actually grade it. They'll do projected points per week, and then they give you a draft grade. And, like, you look at the bottom here, it says meat. You know meat? I got a friend named Meat. Yeah, I know. Okay. And uh, he's the very lowest uh, projected points per week, and they gave him a C. It's a stacked league. Yeah. The worst is a C. Well, it's only 10 people. Yeah, you go up. And How many were in your league last year where you got a D- minus in football, though, Dan? Uh, 12? Like 10, well, 12, yeah. yeah. It is possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, that's good we're not last. But if I look at uh, projected points per week. Can I just say one caveat before you give the grade? Excuse. We drafted Mookie Betts with the third pick in the draft, who will be the Dodgers' full-time shortstop, but his they still have him as a second baseman. So we're going to lose a little bit of points early until they can get it switched over. It does sound like a lot of excuse making. Jeez. And what are we doing as you know, the, my team name hasn't changed in a few years. It's Rugned's brother, Rugned. Uh huh. Perfect. In honor of. In honor <laughs> of Rugned's brother. Yeah. Giving somebody a Rugned. Whose name is Rugned. Mm-hmm. Um, projected points per week. Rugned's brother, Rugned. The very highest. Whoa! Whoa! A draft grade of A. Wow! Cool. <laughs> That's a, is as the most <laughs> excited you'll see him. The, the whole rest. Yeah. The rest of the, the only league time you'll see him excited <laughs> during the show has been served notice. Uh, says here you handled it. Uh, the draft is only the first challenge of many this season, but you handled it better better than any other team in the league, avoiding pitching at the top of the draft paid dividends. Yep. As your team is projected to put up a league leading two hundred forty nine point nine points per week, that is uh, nine point one points per week more than meat is projected to come up with. That description sounds like it was written by whoever Blake has right on the show <laughs> description. Despite picking up last season's strikeout leader in Spencer Strider, we're projecting that. Co- oh, okay, that's more on Meat's team. Who cares, right? All we need to know is. Things are looking very, very good. Your best pickup was Nico Herner. Herner. We thought he should have been selected to, with the 80th slot. You got him with pick number 158. Value. He's our utility All guy. Day. He's not even our starter. Wow. To get Nico Herner there. How do you get Nico Herner? Like, that's the only guy I wanted to make sure you got. Yeah. Yeah. 43 steals last year. When I called you last year. High said, contact hey, look, guy. Whatever you 43 do. 43 steals last year. Now they've changed the uh, block the bag rule. Oh, yeah. Have you seen baseball fans up in arms about that? Oh, yeah. It's this year's uh, version of ruining the game. You got to have one every year. <laughs> got to ruin the game somehow, some way, every year. So that's what Blake was doing last night. How about you? <sighs> I was speaking to a college Oh, college class, the youth of America. Pretty small school. How do they introduce you nowadays? Because it used to be pretty kind of prestigious. You, Hey, he works for the ticket in Dallas. It's the number well, one. Well, now it's he used to. <laughs> and they, yes, have to say the term the dumb zone in front of 40 SMU students who are in a uh, like sports management. It's a senior level course. It's, a, it's not like a bunch of kids. Like These are 22-year-olds, I assume. 21, 22, and it's uh, it's it's taught by Jamie Newberg, Rangers Jamie Newberg, lawyer Jamie Newberg. Speaking of baseball, yeah, and um, he he teaches this course, and it's it's it's, there's a lot of athletes in there, and they discuss like a different sports issue each week. So they'll do like, you know, last night the topic was tanking, 
which I'd actually done that one before. I think I've done this four or five times. I mean, but who's counting? <laughs> um, and yep. it's pro, pro tanking. <laughs> Can't really say. Yeah, it. is there uh, a pro in a con? Well, it was more like. Well, there is a pro. Yeah. Yeah, Luca. Yeah. Yeah, but also just like the you know the bit that everybody's talking about it. Like the the leagues are trying to fix this because they don't want. And the interesting angle of it that I had not considered until I read one of the things Jamie sent out was um, if you have to start paying a la carte for your package, like per team, as opposed to just like, oh, I have an RSN, I have Fox Sports Southwest. If your team deliberately decides to win 20 games in an NBA season, you're going to lose a ton of money. <laughs> so if it goes to that model, it may fix itself in some ways. But like, what you know, the NBA has a lottery. Would the NFL ever have a lottery? What are leagues supposed to do about it? Is it ethical? Are you stealing from the fan? Um, so last night I was there with Jeff Cavanaugh of The Freak, formerly of The Fan, who is, you don't know this because you're not super active on Twitter, but he is uh, Captain Tank. It could be two weeks into the season. <laughs> like he wants the Cowboys to give up on this year. Mm. His point. He'll tweet the same tank driving yeah, down the road, a tank sliding on yeah. ice every time the map. And you know, there are valid points, right? That hey, look, it's actually unethical to convince people to give you money uh, when you know you have absolutely no shot. Like the Mavs for three years were super mid because they wanted to try to make the playoffs for Dirk, that stunted their rebuild significantly. Um, this happened, you know, whatever. The problem is it usually works. As we've seen, it doesn't always work, but Oklahoma City is going to be <laughs> running the West for as long as they have the players that want to stay in Oklahoma, Oklahoma City. But so is Kavanaugh. And then the third guest, um, and this is a bit a bit weird because it was, uh, it was uh, oh, you had to read Jesse Holly. And uh, so it's kind of confusing. I don't know the last time you guys parked on a college campus or near a college campus, or walked around a college campus. But if you're not... Pretty recently. Yeah, but it is kind of like, it's tough, right? You, it's not, yes, parking is a premium. Yeah, parking and then... For outsiders. Trying to find the building, which is a lot easier now with, with Google Maps, obviously, whatever map service you use. But um, so we got started, and Jesse was late because he was lost. He was using his OnStar. <laughs> yeah. So we're he first of all, Jamie introduces us. The kids don't care at all. At all. D it, even when it was the ticket, they're like, what? Any recognition? N absolutely not. I mean, <clears throat> if you're talking about SMU, a significant portion of those kids aren't even from Dallas. So no. Nobody cares. They're just there. It's a three hour night class. I don't know if you ever had any of those, but you don't want to be there. Right. Which is good on Jamie for making the topics like engaging, but it's um, a once a week, right? Yeah, yeah, knock it all out right there. Um, and so Jesse's late, and we're kind of starting the conversation where Jamie asks us what we think, and then the students are supposed to kind of respond. And um, he's like, well, Jesse's late. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go find him and try to get him in, and these two guys are going to lead the discussion. Oh, no. And I looked at Jeff, and I was like, what, the, what are we, we going to do? <laughs> So he leaves, and now it's just us two up there in front of like 40, 45 SMU students who don't want to be there, uh, who I don't know if they have interest in this topic or not, but fortunately, you know, we kind of took over, you know? You relied on your instincts. We two-manned it, got the, got the conversation popping, and uh, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't as bad as I was worried at first. Like, we're just going to sit here in silence for 10 minutes. But, you know, there's enough people in there that are sports fans that they have thoughts on on this topic. All bros? No. I would say 50-50. 50% hoes. <laughs> I was watching oh. Cook over there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when Jesse does come in, you know, he tells his story. Jamie plays the 49ers clip. Now they don't give a shit what Jeff and I have to say. Yeah, so he told his story about what? how he made the team based on oh, yeah. a reality show. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, Incredible. And he had a that he had, that has happened in the NFL. Uh, it would only happen to one team. Play, like, did y'all cover this every single day? Uh, the show every yeah. week for sure. The yeah. Um, what was it called? Fourth and long. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. Great that, show. It was. It was, it was awesome. I loved it. I could. I just at the time I could not believe that was happening. And it's even crazier that he made the team and made the active roster. So did he? So the the winner got an invite to camp. Okay. So one of eighty bodies. Those guys rarely make the team. So Didn't, he made, was he first a practice squatter and then mm-hmm. he got called up because mm-hmm. of okay. I mean, even that you got to think Jerry probably had a uh, handshake deal with Michael Irvin. Like he'll be on the practice squad. Yeah, probably. I can yeah. give you a practice squad slot. But then I think maybe Des got hurt the year he was on the active roster. Like, what if that was a thing every year? That'd be great. It would be. It'd be great for us. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he he has a touchdown in San Francisco. The OU had a re- – it wasn't a touchdown. It actually got tackled at the one in overtime, and then they knelt it out and kicked it, I think. but Was that the punctured lung game? It was. He brought that up. Yeah. Romo had a punctured lung. And so that was good ribs. that Jamie walked away for 10 minutes because that's when you guys had a time where the – the kids actually thought you had something. Yeah, and he had a he had some good points. Like he's obviously every almost every athlete you ask is going to say hell no anti tanking. And his point was like, well, if your team decides that they want to go through a rebuild, the guys at the very top are pretty safe. He's like, I will, I'm not. Yeah, you know they're going to churn the bottom of that roster quickly, and I'm always going to be at the bottom of a roster. Um, so that was kind of interesting. But the most interesting thing was. You know, he came in, you know, we did handshake, hug thing or whatever. I've met him once, but uh, this time he acted like he knew me, he at least knew of me. And the way we parked when we got out, you're, you're there for like 40 minutes, 45 minutes. The way we walked, Jeff went one way, Jesse and I went the other way. And as soon as we got out, uh, I thought about it and then I was like, I'm just going to do it. I was like, because we'd been talking and I was like, yo, you know, you have me blocked on Twitter. Oh, you did it off the – not in front of the guys? No, and, here, oh. and here's why. Okay. He was like, what? And I was like, yeah, um, a couple of years ago, do you remember when Romo suited up for the Mavs? And he was like, yeah. I was like, well, you tweeted a photo, uh, which we have if you're watching on video, but it's Romo in a Mavs jersey, and he's looking kind of down and, like, shocked or, like, <laughs> like happy. <laughs> And Jesse tweeted that with um, a stupid grin. He, yeah, Je- Jesse, look at Brad Davis in the background. Jesse tweeted that with uh, "When you get it in her hair," as Romo has like a little s- sly grin and he's like looking down, looking down. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I was great. like, you know, and you deleted it, and I tweeted you, and I was like, why did you delete that? That's, that was that's great. Gold. And he was like, he doubled over laughing. I was like, do you remember that tweet? He was like, yeah, of course I do. Why did he? I was like, that was a why did he block great you? tweet. He was like, honestly, dude, he was like, I was getting so much hate for that tweet. He's like, I probably just, I was just spraying. Like, I was blocking everybody who tweeted me right then. And, <laughs> and how do you know Jesse Holly blocked you? I knew it at the time. Well, like, he was, you know, he was on the fan. Like, he would be, he does a podcast with Jeff. Like, he's in Cowboy Twitter for sure. And, uh, yeah, so I told him, I was like, yeah, you got me blocked for that. And I, all I wanted to tell you was that that was a badass tweet. It was, it was hilarious. Like, come in the hair joke? Like, what Okay, <laughs> so you didn't want to do the come in the hair joke in That's front why. of the class. Yeah. So, so uh, before I even got back to my car, he had tweeted me the predator, reem, uh, predator meme of uh, what's his, uh, Arnold and the guy who just passed. Why am I blanking on Carl? Carl Weathers, like the white, black like handshake. <laughs> <laughs> so everything's the night turned out great. It did. It wow. definitely did. He was like, "Let's be best friends." <laughs> <laughs> we both love coming in here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I was pretty pumped about it. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I'm gonna slide in a little sports news. I know we got a lot of. Actually, maybe I shouldn't. Uh, okay, well, I want to only because it's LeBron. Of course. The fourth member, fifth member <laughs> of our show. Well, the problem I have here is that LeBron... Did you know that he's going to do a podcast now? Yeah, we told you. He's doing a podcast with J.J. Redick. The first one, pretty awesome. Okay, someone asked him why he's doing the podcast. I feel like... Um... We was losing the essence of of, um, of the game of basketball and the true meaning behind the game of basketball and teaching our youth and teaching our teaching the people what the game of basketball really um, 
what, what it truly really means. Uh, Do you think this is funny so far? It's uh, it's sickening and hilarious. He's a savior, folks. He's not just the king. It's just that. You know, I think. Um, I'm just appalled. I, I was getting, um, you know, very frustrated with the the daily comparisons every single day. You know, who's better between you and Dave McMenamin, or how does this affect your legacy? Or... Between you and who? He's talk. Dave McMenamin is a reporter who's covered him for a long time, so he's like pointing at the different reporters and saying, like, is he, are you better than Dave? Oh, okay. And, yeah. Yeah, but the questions are. I mean, he's obviously bringing it back to Jordan, LeBron, yeah. Bill Russell. LeBron, he just didn't want to know, say like, that. Yes, he's. I mean, it, just all the comparisons. I mean, everybody's <laughs> saying I'm. You know, better, McDonald's, or... Burger King. I I I can't get over constantly you know, hearing uh, about Bueno Bell. If this guy played, you know, in the fifties, would he be this? Or if this guy in the fifties played in the two thousands, I mean, it's, it's, it's not good for the youth. Um, you, know, um, mm. you know, obviously. How you got to think about the youth? Like, let's explain that. I always thought that was kind of playground talk that was. Got you into sports, but it's now bar talk. You know, whatever. Yeah. It's it's sports talk. It's that's yeah. That's your little. That's you doing your show on the playground is because I think we had Jordan and Bill Russell. Yeah, when I was growing up, so it's little kids loved Michael Jordan, and you know, old men would be like, "No, nah, Bill Russell, ten championships. Yeah, yeah, he didn't play against anybody. You know, yeah. I hadn't developed all my reasoning, but now I have to why Michael Jordan was better than Bill Russell." So it's number three. It's number three on threats. It's number three, lack of public education funding. Uh, number two is fentanyl, and number one is kids banding about about comparing Bob Cousy to Steph. These are the three things <laughs> the that three, are really hurting the three today's things challenging our youth. You want to hear that? You go to the barber shops, but you know you're hearing it every day on national television, and I feel like our audience needed a different approach and understand what really the, the true essence of the game, what I, how I fell in love with the game. The essence. And um, when you have someone like J.J. who has kind of the same um, mindset about the game of basketball, very smart, you know, fell in love with the game for all the right reasons. He's not screaming about stuff. I don't know how you fall in love with the game for all the right reasons. This That's is something I've been thinking about for quite essence. a while. It's just, um, you know, J.J. was just... It was a perfect timing. Okay. Um, while I did find their podcast very good, I will point out this is a bit ironic because uh, the thing that got people the most upset at J.J. Redick was when he compared – when he when he called the players of the 50s and the 60s plumbers. Yeah. That's pretty famous. Yeah. that's a... He's like, J.J. understands. So this to me, though, as a podcaster, mm -hmm. you remember this argument I used to have with Bob – on the ticket in Dallas? Yeah. Probably. Uh, <laughs> he would really, he'd be stoked about the USA playing Mexico in soccer. And I would say, why do we, why are you demanding that the USA fire their coach and have a better soccer program? This is, like, why do we need to beat up on everybody and everything? Why don't Mexico has nothing? They've barely got running water. They, they've got uh, <laughs> Montezuma's revenge. Like, give them soccer. Can we not let them have soccer? So, like, LeBron, you have everything. LeBron is the USA. We're Mexico. We just have a, a podcast with uh, nearly 6,000 subscribers. Ooh. How do you like that? 59.25 this morning. Uh, He's, Duolingo. He's obsessed. Uh, Why can't – What's what? the baseball one? Immaculate Grid. Immaculate Grid. Check the – This is what I do every morning? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I know what you're saying, but, I mean, the ego of a guy like that knows no bounds. Like, I got to have everything. I already own – like, I have a first athlete to make a billion dollars. I mean, he did, the, he did the shop. He had to do own a team. Space and gonna... Jam 2, which I think flopped, didn't it? It wasn't that good. It was horrible. I mean, it was definitely horrible, but I didn't. I wasn't sure if like kids watched it or not. But uh, yeah, I mean, he's LeBron. He's gonna. He's gonna. He probably thinks right now that he could step in and be CEO of like Apple. <laughs> he might I'm be. I'm only to. barely kidding about that. But it is. I. I got it. Like I said last week, when those two guys start talking ball, it's pretty insane. It's pretty insane. Um, we were going to break in about 10 or 15 minutes.
because we do have guests coming in. Do we want to do? Uh, do you want to do another sports thing or want to kill viewer mail? What do you want to do? I definitely. You mean like kill viewer mail is and do it right now? Yeah, like yes, knock it I off. definitely don't want to not do it. Knock it off or knock it out. We can go a little past hey, 30. Everybody. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. It's time to answer some of today's viewer mail. Wow. I don't think this will be too long, but I did have a birthday to read today. Actually, a late arriving birthday, too. So I'll have to look at the email. Here's email. Okay. Uh, Dear Bracket Bruv. I hope this inferior Gmail finds you well. And with an unbusted bracket, I write uh, for my slightly older brother's birthday. He is celebrating his Mark Stepnowski slash Bill Romanowski birthday. Wait. 53? I don't know. His leaders are lesser yeah. known LD really? Bell, Blue yeah. Raider greats like Paulu Lotaki. John Howdeshell and former Diamondbacks great Ryan Tatman Roberts. I don't know if he'll be woken up in that special way, but he will go to bed with delicious Eatsy's Oreos that I re-gifted him. Happy birthday, Sparky Scott. He doesn't have a sister. This is from Wire Will, who was actually Ooh. in the den over uh, the weekend repairing the internet that Trey uh, messed up. <laughs> <laughs> and Wire Will... If you remember, we did a so Wire Will had his house burned down. Mm-hmm. In fact, he said they were bulldozing it on Sunday when he was over. And Wire Will, remember, he had a gift for us, but anyway, it wasn't framed at the time, and he has put a frame on it. And he has uh, given us this. This will be great for this studio. We always used to say the new studio. Mm -hmm. but now here we are. <laughs> this is, of course. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. <laughs> that is a, a framed uh, black and white image of the 9-11 memorial down the street from my house in Grapevine in front of a Tex-Mex restaurant. <laughs> yeah. This is what started it all. All this talk about people sending us their favorite 9-11 yeah. memorial. Yeah, so a place you can go into and get a gallon of margaritas, mm -hmm. if you so choose. Uh, there's also a uh, a commemoration of one of the flight crews, which some of were based in Dallas. It's the loosest connection ever. But at that time, we thought that was weird. Now we come to find out they're everywhere. They're in Ireland. That's actually common. But, that makes sense. But to be in front of a Tex-Mex, so it's it says, a little cheap. Never forget the chips and salsa. <laughs> <laughs> no puppet is inscribed here. So we will hang this it, up. What's next to uh, Tabesa? What is it? What does that sign say? Is that like a for lease? Space for lease. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that shopping center is like almost completely empty. It's just <laughs> hold on. Brilliant idea. We're leaving the studio. <laughs> That's we're leasing that. We have to be there. Yeah, it's also it's across the street from a Starbucks. So if you want to know, get the full vibe of where we are there. And you could walk to work, right? I'd probably still drive. Make a couple phone calls. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, That's incredible. Thank you from Wire Will. We'll have to hang that somewhere. Or we can see it on camera. Um. Dear Paris Fuhrer, I heard you talking about doing a live stream of the eclipse. If you don't find a better place, I live very close to Ennis, Texas, out in the country. Is that a higher level of a uh, higher amount of minutes? Of path the of eclipse? totality? I have no idea. The path of totality. It's in the path, Video Man says. Well, we're in the path too, right? We're full of the path. Oh, okay. So they like got four or five minutes? We're edging the path. If you want to live stream from my place, you're welcome to it. Who knows? We could even shoot some guns and maybe blow up some Tannerite for the show Ooh. from Joe Chandler. Explosives. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I certainly appreciate the gracious offer, but I also think it's just going to be such a nightmare getting anywhere. Yeah, we might just have to stay in the den. Might have to. But who knows? Again, we could be bought. Uh, as a Twitterless, this is from Ryan. As a Twitterless DF, I'm not abreast of 
when there are remotes. Could we get a calendar somewhere or maybe a Patreon notification the day before? Definitely for the definitely on the Patreon, yeah. But once we get a website, I would imagine that's where our remote calendar will live. I will say the website will be up and fully operational on at least by 420. All right. Okay. Big event. Because we have an event on Thanks 420 where we are going to announce a few things and we want to have more things to announce, so that's one of them. Okay. That we will announce. That's exciting. So websites hot right now. <laughs> <laughs> what websites in general? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, our next one, Thursday, opening day in Lot D. Lot D. We just announced it. There you go. Um, I mean, unless, should we announce when we're just like at some guy's house? Like, if people <laughs> just want to come hang? I guess they've all been the very fun. And I have, hello, gentlemen. DF3114 here. My wife works at Northridge Middle School. Upon Jake's announcement that he attended there, she went to the library and looked through the yearbooks. Please see the attached. Here's a picture of 7th grade Jake. It kind of sucks that he's not even goofy looking. Do you have 7th grade Jake? Well, this should be Video good. man? That is, uh, there's Jake. Oh, that is If you're Jake. watching our video. Yeah. Got a little denim button up. He's a handsome little man. I know. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Am I allowed to say that? What happened to me? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Am I allowed to compliment the looks of a little kid? It's if just, it's me, it's just a sharp-looking young me, man. It's okay. yeah. You know what's yeah. funny? Hot is little I, boy. I asked that. that guy, um, "Do you have eighth grade?" And he said, "No, that yearbook is missing," which is weird. <laughs> like, what teacher <laughs> what left cover with that? <laughs> 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 hey, on my way out, I got to grab a few things from the library. But he did say that he had a uh, sixth grade. Exact same shirt. Mm. My mom. Oh, that was your Sunday best. Yeah, my mom must have had a rule of like photos mean denim button up. <laughs> I and regret. As I said to the guy, it was either that or I was like Harbaugh's closet. I just had yeah a row of denim button ups. I, dude, there was a lot of denim in my life back then, a lot. I, think I, re- I had a denim short sleeve. You were no doubt wearing blue jeans, right? Oh, so yeah. denim on denim. Oh yeah, <laughs> Canadian tuxedo all the way. <laughs> I regret being me as a kid because I had a young mom who had me when she was 19. And so she wasn't really into parenting like people are today. And I never bought yearbooks and like I didn't care. It's like, whatever. I'll just wear my flannel. You don't, you don't, you know, whatever it was. I just never cared about any of that stuff, and I so wish I had those. Like, I know there's sites you can try and find your high school yearbook. and You definitely can. But I don't own them. I don't own my high school yearbooks, and my kid have, my kids have, you know, something. I made sure, because even when they were like, I don't want this. Like, I'm happy I didn't buy the class ring. Yeah. What would I do with that? But hey. people people will buy a high school Great class ring. high school. <laughs> did you buy a class ring? No. I don't even remember if we had that. We probably did, but no, I did not. I don't think I have my mom might have my yearbooks. I don't I don't recall, but there is a website because I was trying to remember somebody's name and I really wanted to find this name. It was a couple years ago. It was driving me crazy. Um and I went to a website. It's very easy to get. Well, it's easy to get like at least like a digital copy, which is not the same. But you can like scan through it and see. People's names, and then I went to her house. What? Nah, I mean, we'll... <laughs> that part was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I have one piece of viewer mail for you guys, uh, and it has a video component, but the audio will work just the same. As I told you guys, um, part of my contribution to viewer mail is going to be what was in the group chat today. Ah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, this one actually wasn't necessarily a group chat, but it was something that was sent to me by our good friend Sam from Quaker City Nighthawks. Um, you know Sam? You know Sam on Instagram. And uh, I didn't see it until today. He sent it like a week ago. And uh, it's, it's a video clip that I think is right up our alley. You never know whose family it will happen to. 
You can play it now if you want. It's uh, it's a, it's from a Hulu documentary about the Dana Carvey show, which I knew nothing about. But I'm now going to watch the documentary and the show. Do you oh, know? I've seen it. Yeah, is, is it, it called? Uh, did you say what it was called? The Dana Carvey show is this one. But if you have more on, no, it, the oh, documentary. Oh no, I've not. I, I don't know what it's called. I don't. Okay, you're going to watch the documentary. Yes, but it was uh, the show had Dana Carvey, Steve Carell. Uh, Stephen Colbert, Bob Odenkirk, uh, Bob Odenkirk. It was written by um, Louis C.K. among others. It's it an incredible documentary produced by Robert Smigel. Uh, the, the show I'm saying, but this is them from the documentary uh, watching a promo for the show. ABC Tuesday. A parent's worst fear. Home improvement. Child. I don't want to die, Dad. You never know whose family it will happen to. An episode so powerful it hits home. We beat this thing. That's a show in the actor. A special home improvement followed by the Diet Mug Root Beer Dana Carvey Show. (laughs) 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 So they go from the promo for Home Improvement where Jonathan Taylor A very special character has cancer. Yeah, it is, I'm not going to let anything I mean, that happen. says it all. I'm not going to let anything says it happen. All. What were we doing? And Dude, then, that documentary is great. But you have to the watch the promo it. from a very special episode of Home Improvement, right? To followed by the Dana Carvey Diet Root Beer <laughs> Show. In fact, I'll watch it again, and maybe we can even get the the guy who doesn't do stuff to watch it. It's one ep- It's one thing, so probably so. But this made me think of one of our That's favorite you. moments over the last couple of years. If the if the war in Ukraine gave us one thing, it was this. Do you remember when we played this audio on the air of a CNN report um, that had a very awkward transition as they tried to go to break? Is it not? Did you not put it in there, Blake? It's in there. The uh, Applebee's one. No, you're good. You. Good. This is one of our favorite bits, though. Is like uh, going from yeah. Sirens, shot of Kiev. You can hear the sirens. Air raid sirens. And a little bit of chicken. Fries. <laughs> <laughs> Go beer on Friday night. A pair of jeans that fit just right. And the radio. You get five bonus wings for one dollar with any. That's a good deal. Pretty damn good deal. <laughs> yeah, the sound of war and in the background. Right in the <laughs> Like, it could not have been a more perfect ad. Like, it wasn't... Did we get that guy on? No, we got uh, the the other guy. The had, other Applebee's? Yeah. Yeah. And it took him better, Applebee's. Yeah. How many Applebee's <laughs> country music songs are there? I they know their audience. Yeah. It's just like... I don't know. It could have been like for life insurance or for uh, Ford Explorer or something. But it's said it's just... Five boneless wings, one dollar each. Now back to the destruction of Ukraine's capital. And then it's a guy dancing in the tightest jeans you've ever seen. Yeah, like with his butt <laughs> facing the camera. <laughs> There's your viewer mail. All right. Um, you want to take a little break? Sure. Okay. The dumb zone. The dumb zone. Let's check in with Jim Knox. I right, appreciate it, Buzz. It is Korean night here at Globe Life Park, and a special guest, Master Kim. He is the president of the Taekwondo Association of Texas. They've been putting on displays all around Globe Life Park. Let's see someone break a couple boards. Girls, let's give it a shot, okay? It's in there. Let's side a kick. Ready. Kick. Here we go. Ha! Oh! Nice. Okay. One more. Quickly. Another quip. There we go. Go. Ha! Oh, don't want to mess with those girls. Give me one, Master Kim. I'm feeling it right here. Ready? How about a headbutt? Ah! Huh? Oh, wow. D- dizzy now, Master Kim. I appreciate that. You guys enjoy the game. Wow. Yes. Oh, Jim Knox crazy. Yeah. You're listening to The Dumb Zone. The Puppet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The golden age. Truly. Where's Noxy right now? It's a good question. I know he was at TMS for a fair piece, but... You know, it's not as fun whenever the entire crowd is exactly the same (laughs) to rove the stands. (laughs) 
Well, here's Jim <laughs> from Saxy, and uh, let's go over to Bo from Burleson. Yeah, it can't be can't be nearly as fun. <laughs> no, no. Um, all right. So in the next half of our program, because we've done about half or so, we have guests. They are in studio in our brand new studio, which could be the future studio, but could not be. No one really knows yet. Joining us now is TC and Blind Josh, yeah! old friends of the show. Thanks for having us. Ooh, the camera spin. <laughs> that was bad. Hello, gents. A little camera spin. That was awesome. TC, uh, we call you that, like Coach Joe. TC, the initials, he's Thomas Charles, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Blind Josh, we've always wondered why, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, cause you don't like, when I look at you, you don't look blind unless you're, <laughs> you know, you're not wearing like sunglasses. Do you have a, your cane with you? I you do. always have your cane with you, right? Yeah. I, uh, I gave an Uber look. ride to a guy with the, uh, the pure whites, the pure other day. whites of the eyes. And, uh, I'm glad Josh doesn't have that. Okay. That would, you would not still be friends with him. I would, but it, you, you little, you'd get used to it, I guess. I am worried I have a little bit of a googly eyes whenever I get tired. I'm worried I look a little like Paul Giamatti in that movie. <laughs> you may know uh, TC and Blind Josh from our trip to, um, what do you call it, the Dr. Phil show? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What else have we done together recently? Oh, we went to Notre Dame together. We yeah. did. We stormed the field. We're Notre Dame. James. And uh, we are also three body problem buddies. Oh, yes. So I thought, Blind Josh. Yeah. Oh, really? Because I called TC the other day, and we were setting this up and you know, get here at whatever time and all that. And then uh, I said, man, three body problem. I'm watching it on Netflix. Are you fired up? And he said, I never read it. Not a, not about that nerd shit. When I first met you, uh, or we, when we met Justin in Chicago to go to the Notre Dame game, Justin suggested we go, or uh, we should read this cool book. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I read the cool book. It was great. I read I part read two. I read part three. We're on a text thread where we're going back and forth with each other about, oh, I'm here now. I'll send a picture of where I'm at. And it's kind of gay. But uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> I wasn't going to say it. It's just my little, our little four-man book club. And yeah, it turns out TC the whole time was not he was in he was participating in the chat, but actually no, never read the book. I'm not on the text thread, bud. Although it could be debated whether Josh read the book. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, I mean, you asked Stop Dr. It. Phil because he listened to the book. Stop it! I feel like he's it the counts. only one that should be able to say it, right? Are you watching the Netflix show? Yes. Although you can't have the same opinion that my wife has because you can't really see it. My wife has the same opinion as your wife. The lead scientist is yeah, just too just, hot. Just distracting. She's distracting. really, really hot. <laughs> yeah. So all of a sudden, you know, my wife looks over. I'm snaking it out. I'm getting excited. <laughs> She... Snake is generous. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm worming it out. <laughs> um, so you guys are just going to join us for the uh, the remainder of the program. Awesome. Do we want to plug their thing first? Sure. Or do you want to get into some stuff? Let's plug and then stuff, and we can plug more. You have a new bit, right? Yeah. That you want to promote. We want to tell all the Rangers fans out there about what we got cooking. Uh, so whenever the playoffs happened, I watched them all at, uh, Josh's house. He couldn't come over to my house cause it's hard for him to walk that far mm-hmm. by himself. <laughs> and, uh, I was, you know, we're, we've all been friends with Josh for a long time. We know that he likes baseball. I really underestimated the degree to which he is the smartest baseball person I've ever talked to at length. Like he was, he was doing the Tony Romo thing of like, uh, curveball, you know, top right coming here. And then it would every time. And I was blown away. I was, I was really enjoying it. And I said, this, I can't keep this to myself. I have to share this with the world. So once a week, we're going to do a Rangers game on Twitch. Just a, my Twitch a channel. watching party. Little, yeah, com- yeah. Little companion stream. Yeah, surely your listeners will be familiar with the concept. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, just twitch.tv slash TC Fleming. TC Fleming is my account name. Josh has a deep baseball background. He was a very good player. Maybe. I, I, I was I was left handed, so I got you know you get brownie points. You automatically become good if you can just throw a strike and you're left handed. 
Which is the very opposite, if I recall the TC playing days stories. Yeah, I was (laughs) right-handed. But didn't you go through an entire Little League season with zero hits? I went through a career with zero hits. Oh, the whole career. You've never, have you fouled them off, fouled one off? If I did, I don't recall. I mean, at this point, all of it's, you know, bad. Pretty, uh, pretty mushy as far as any kind of clear memories. I remember the time I got hit. That one's fresh in the. You got on base. I did get on base then, although I don't think it was me. I think I said I'm. I'm <laughs> you took a pinch runner. <laughs> I'm calling this one. No, because if I he, see an excuse to sit in the stands and I'm taking it. Yeah, I mean, if if he had fouled one off, he would he would remember it. Like it would be the yeah 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 <laughs> the natural the, theme fires the off. The back. <laughs> <laughs> so you would play the <laughs> your coach would play you the maximum amount of in or minimum that you could play, right? Yes, despite the coach being my dad, that is what we went with. <laughs> so it would be like three innings. You got Every kid has to play like half the game. Look, he's so. got a responsibility to these other kids. <laughs> can't have DC and, out there. Oh, my God. So you'd watch three pitches go by, and then you'd uh, head walk out to right field. Where would you – Where what was your field? Uh, yeah, you you know it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right field. Which I believe um, – in fact, I, uh, I love to play second base. So if we were up – 10 runs or more, or more likely They'd let you down play 10 runs or more, I'd get one inning at second. What if a lefty came up? Would they move you? No, I, I don't think that was allowed. Okay. They, if they did, they if they could, they didn't. Because the reason you like playing second is you don't usually get a real, real hot shot there. Yeah. If you're playing third, you'll get a bullet. I don't think I shorter. was uh, – there was no way I understood baseball well enough to Dude. put all that together. It's also okay. a shorter throw. You know, like if sure, you're yeah, seven years throw. old, I don't know that you're whipping one from That's short. That's a great point, yeah. <laughs> I just think a lot the of number the two kind of looked cool. Yeah, dribblers. yeah, for sure. That, I mean, listen, his baseball uh, experience, I mean, I had hits, but I wanted to play second base because I typically played right field. I played left field some, but left field, right field, second base. was, And it was a similar situation where I wasn't going in at second unless the game was over. You didn't have to jog as far. From the <laughs> that, dugout, I never if you played second. That, really. that was, is that, I mean, with those little legs, it's a long way to get you out ever, the right field. Did you ever make a put out? You think? No, I I don't think I caught. <laughs> You're like a Toby Hara in that famous doubleheader. <laughs> <laughs> Does everybody know that reference? Yeah, never got a ball at shortstop for two straight games. That's right. See, he knows. He's a baseball guy. That's right. He is a baseball guy. Blake's a little upset because Blake is a baseball guy. <clears throat> no, Blake's, I'll, Blake's I'll good, default. Though. Blake's my general manager. Blake hits bombs. I only ever hit one home run my whole life. Yeah, oh, that I like a real over the fence home run. Like I had inside the park home runs. You know. Did you do the whole hypothetical? Like you said, man, if I could hit one home run, I don't care if I could even see again. Yeah, yeah, that's when I gave. That's, <laughs> that was the deal I made with the devil, and it <laughs> didn't realize. It's like he's gonna hold me to like it. Jerry of the Super Bowls. It's just, <laughs> so it's. I didn't think he'd take that to heart. Twitch dot dot net. Twitch.tv slash TC Fleming. TC Fleming. With one M, they say. That's right. Yep. Yeah. All right. Ranger well, buddy. It's one way to get me to watch the Rangers, I'll tell you that. Hey. Well, no, with, I'm serious. With I don't, no it, Bally. Uh, there are ways. You know what I just did is I just got rid of DirecTV. Finally. You're, so you're doing Bally solo? It's been wow. 20 years. Wow, you did too? I, I, I just did that, that too. Morning. You got rid of cable? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so now I'm YouTube TV only. Yeah, well, that, but that makes sense. You already had you were having you had two for a long time, right? You had YouTube TV. And that was Direct mostly TV. for the show. I had YouTube TV for the show because that's real easy to cut off audio. So you would pay the seventy bucks a month just to pull audio. Yeah, cares about the show. Dang. Yeah. You, now you're going to get to experience the third level of hell that Blake and I know about, which is trying to watch on the Bally app. Mm. But now he's a small business owner; he can't afford it anymore. He can write it off though. That's true. Well, that's why I wanted the hundred bucks a month from Directv to be taxes. gone. Yeah, as a small with, business owner. I'm with you. It's it's not good. The Bally app. The experience is not good. Um, maybe it'll be better. <laughs> well, it's only for one more year, right? Hopefully. Yeah, they're throwing in a lot of resources to improve things here. Just at the very <laughs> end. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good point. <laughs> Top programmers are working 24 hours. Should we continue, if you want to flow, baseball talk? Yeah. Otani talk? Yeah. What uh, What do we make of it today? Feels like we're learning nothing, and we're going to continue to learn nothing. Did you listen to any of it? A little bit. Yeah, I mean, he 
obviously said nothing. He didn't take questions. It was about a 12-minute statement. He did have a new interpreter. Yeah, we <laughs> anticipated that, right? Um, I think that guy was like a team president or something, though, right? Was he? Uh, yeah, I, th- I think he's high up in the Dodgers front office. I know, like, Friedman was there. What? Joe Kelly. There were a couple of his teammates there. Um, the chief marketing officer. Well, if we can get him in. Yeah, it was just a mm-hmm. weird mm-hmm. group of people. And, uh, yeah, he just came in with a folder, read a statement in Japanese for 12 minutes, took no questions, and basically said they did, did what we what we thought he would do. He pinned it all on him. And now it's asked and answered, and we're not allowed to ask him questions about it, right? Well, the league will. Sure. But we aren't. No. But the league is not going to. Yeah. Said he never asked someone. He's never bet on sports, any sport. Never asked someone to do it on his behalf. Never gone through a bookmaker to bet on sports, which feels like an unnecessary add-on if you've already indicated that you've never bet on sports. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm with Haralabob. Wasn't he questioning just finding someone to take that much action? Yeah. Yeah. Is very difficult to do, apparently. And it's, Unless you can definitely say, I could pay this. Yeah. And that means, to me... The interpreter of Otani cannot prove that. Otani can prove that. Yeah, and I wonder too, like this this bookmaker that he's not only under federal investigation, but he's also under IRS investigation. I wonder if he'd be willing to sing a little bit, mm-hmm. you know? Or how many other people, other clients does he have that he's makes him not willing to sing on it? <laughs> That's true yeah. too. Yeah, you want now? Does he's going? To, he's probably going to jail though. So at some point you're looking for a deal. The bookmaker? Yeah. I'd love to know what they're able to find out about the wire transfer. Well, so that's, that's I think, the remaining question that he didn't even touch yesterday. And since he can't be asked anything, the main question is how Ippy got access to his account. And then did, and then did multiple transfers. Like, I know the guy's got a billion dollars. You would think if half a million dollars comes out of your account twice – like, you would know, right? Somebody in your circle, your financial advisor, or somebody would be like, what is this? Mm-hmm. Everyone's favorite guy, Nate Silver, was talking about this. And <laughs> his contention was uh, the way that the California state taxes, like he was just, get, as an example, that California state taxes, I believe, for someone like Otani are paid quarterly. So, like, there's going to be, except for him, that's going to be a multi-million dollar thing. So, like, if you're not paying hyper close attention to your finances you'll know that there's a couple million gone every quarter anyways if you just kind of time a a a theft around that then you could get it done but i don't like it's crazy that it's just the one transfer because in order to run up that kind of debt you would just need more verification the bookie just like you know what what haral bob is saying you wouldn't need to just pay him 4.5 million one time in order to be, have a situation where you needed to pay him 4.5 million he would have to be sure that you have that kind of money on access and this interpreter's salary is like what 300,000 a year something like that yeah something like that i did see although i couldn't understand it cuz nobody translated it um but i saw uh a news report from a japanese t- uh television station And they were saying there was a guy who was an interpreter, and he was saying that actually he regularly handled like financial transactions for the guys that he interpreted for. That big though. That's I mean it's not one thing to have not going to get a book a hotel. Yeah, it's one thing to have the credit card or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that that is definitely shadier. And to go back to the beginning of the whole thing, yeah, we now know that the guy is a liar. He's a liar one way or the other at the start of this. But as we were talking about yesterday. He lied out. He's been lying about his resume basically since he came to the States. You know, the Red Sox come out and say, like, I don't know, we don't even, maybe he worked with somebody in the offseason, but we don't know him. Didn't go to the school he said he went to. So it's easy to say, like, oh, okay, well, why did his story change? He's a liar either way, but it's really odd to sit down for 90 minutes and have a pretty specific narrative and then flip it the next day, unless. Like a lot of liars do, he had a very specific narrative planned out when he went to ESPN Mm -hmm. and was going to tell them that whole story. But wouldn't you just know that, like, if I sit here and say, yeah, Shohei, I watched him do the, he watched me do the transactions that whole bit. He was covering my debt. 
Don't you know that tomorrow, if that's a lie, they're going to come out and say that didn't happen? And it was Shohei's people sitting him down for the interview, right? They sent him there. They sent him to ESPN. And they didn't ask him, what are you going to say, Bob? <laughs> I don't know. I guess not. I guess not. They, maybe it's hard they, for me to understand that. It's very hard. And you know, uh, interestingly enough, a kid in Jamie's class last night brought up a good point, which is everybody always says, like, oh, I mean, this guy, this would be shocking. This guy has a squeaky clean image. You know, he's the poster boy of the league, which is true. But also, we don't really know anything about him. Mm -hmm. That's why it's clean, yeah. We just found out he has a wife. Yeah. yeah. It was hot. <laughs> yeah. Like a few weeks ago, we found out he has a wife. Yeah. Also, recall Tiger Woods' image in That's exactly November I, of 2008. That's exactly what I said to the kid. Yeah. I was like, yeah. Or kid. He's probably sound like an old man. <laughs> yeah. You don't know anything about him. So that's what makes his image squeaky clean. But it's not like he's, uh, you know, out in the public. You don't see him. You see him at a couple sporting events, and that's it. It's really, really weird but I am trending towards the idea that he's not going to face any consequences for anything related to this. That's where I started. Had a fall guy. That's where I remain. Yeah, he had a fall guy, except kind of, that the fall guy didn't just take the fall yeah. immediately. They messed up the fall guy. Yeah. Which seems weird. But yeah, the, in order for him to ever be found guilty or you know something clear-cut like that, it would have to be giant smoking gun, and it feels like we're never going to get that. It feels like they're always going to have enough of a fig leaf that they're like, how about you guys just stop asking questions about it? Yeah. Which, I don't know, is is kind of also what I want. I don't, I don't want it so that Otani doesn't play baseball again. I would like for everyone to pretend like this didn't happen. I do have one piece uh, that we can play here. Uh, there's a video in this part, Rob. I uh, put it on the rundown. Let's see where it is. The audio is pretty good as well. Uh, maybe I didn't, but it's it's Pete Rose. If you can find it, you you knew this wouldn't take long. Yeah. Oh. So, <laughs> somebody, some some guy looks like they're in Vegas, probably, or some knockoff version of Vegas is sitting there with Pete Rose. Some. Hey guys, Matt Thrash here, enjoying some March Madness with my great friend Pete Rose, and uh, we just had a. We were talking about the current goings on in baseball right now, and Pete wanted to mention something. Well, back in the 70s and 80s, I wish I'd have had an interpreter. I'd be <laughs> scot free. <laughs> there you have it from the Hit King. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> yep. Pretty good. Simple to the point. Yep. Pretty good. You knew you knew something would come out eventually. Like I also, would, uh, yeah. But if this was the end of Shohei's career, then it's a it's a different animal. What do you mean? Yeah, that if was, he was the like end managing. Of, if he was managing some team now, like I talked about yesterday, Pete Rose was not not really well liked in baseball already. Yeah, and he was uh, yeah he was already retired. I wonder why. And yeah, so. That's you know, true. Yeah, okay. At the end of, you know, they were they were willing to ban Pete Rose. Would they have banned Pete Rose as a player? As a player, maybe even Sweet. he's 200 uh hits shy of Ty Cobb. Yeah. You know, they weren't banning Maguire. Yeah. And Sosa. Mm -mm. I still love Blake's idea that he has to go play shooting guard for the Texas Legends. <laughs> <laughs> like Michael Jordan had to go play for the for the Bears. Just a light slap on the wrist. You'll be back yeah, in a couple year, years. One year in the G League. Yeah, he suddenly just oh. announced. I don't have the passion. Your anymore. UCL will heal. In My dad time. always wanted yeah. me to yeah, play yeah, basketball. Yeah, yeah how is Shohei's dad, dad doing? Yeah, was the slap on the wrist if you, it's a hit on your dad? Also, oh man, yeah. It's, I mean, we don't know much more about it. He said nothing. He's not going to say anything now. Uh, this does take the heat off of the story about how it wasn't cool the way he did his contract. Remember that? Yeah. Like, doesn't he? He's just got a base salary of like two million a year. Yeah. Whoever figured that out is that because of California taxes? Is that because of business? It's... I remember it being tax related, and but being... other teams were really mad at that. Yeah, being framed as he's he's just trying to help the team out. But I think it was tax related. Whether it was an international thing. 
or a California thing. So what is it? Is it it's just deferred? Will that affect the Dodgers in the future then? That man, so this year we have they, forty million on the books for they charge him the against the cap like the prorated amount. So like you know, in the end, the total number that'll go into his bank account will be say seventy million, but if you adjust for inflation and things like that, I think it ends up as a cap hit of forty six million. This year. Yeah. So in present dollars he's getting forty six million. Okay. Because in, you know, twenty forty or whatever he's getting seventy and it won't be worth seventy by then. Okay. Maybe his interpreter screwed that up. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't explain it to him. Hey, with you here, uh, we haven't talked Justin Fields yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What? Did I just you, thought that was crazy. Nah, I just I, I was on uh, I was in Paris and I saw that. I'm seeing all this news about this happening and that happening and the Justin Fields thing. No, oh, that do, that doesn't seem insane to you? I was surprised. Just the your idea Jake of let's just why wouldn't I just keep two quarterbacks rather than trade him? It also uh, illuminates I think that the Cowboys really got snowed once again in a trade for Trey Lance. You could have had a start, a guy who has proven he can do something on an NFL football field for what is it, a fourth and a sixth? It's a fourth. It's a sixth that could turn into a fourth. Mm. That's okay. It's just a sixth. <laughs> yeah. Trey Lance was a straight up fourth. Yeah, I, I think that in you know if you want to roll your eyes at this, that's fine. Uh, I think that they really were willing to take some amount of a hit because they wanted to be fair to Justin. Like they, I think they had better offers, like obviously not way better, but I think they had somewhat better offers, but they felt like the, <laughs> basically they looked at it and were like, he could probably beat out Russell Wilson. And yeah, or at least be the, call him the quarterback of the future still. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, as far as like keeping him around, it seems like they were pretty dead. They said this several times and then, you know, they traded him for, definitely less than everyone thought he was going to get. So I, I think that backs them up some that it was a real priority for them that Justin didn't feel good about this entire thing and feel like he had been treated fairly by the organization. Well, that's and if ridiculous. you're, if you're building around Caleb, then, you know, keeping Justin around is probably not something Justin's excited about. Yeah. It's not like he can mentor him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just, I remember, I mean, a few weeks ago, I had the note that Justin Fields stopped following the Bears on Instagram. Oh, yeah. It's always then, a fun one. There actually was something to that. Just wait. Because, like, Giannis unfollowed the Bucks and then signed, like, a super mm -hmm. max extension. This happens all the time. But time um, capsule this for me, Blake. Okay. The year of Luca's free agency, that summer, he will unfollow the Mavericks. <laughs> <laughs> what about Luca AI? Will he unfollow the Mavericks? <laughs> Man, that's going to be a huge story if that happens. Oh, it's going to happen. <laughs> it really will. It's going to happen. It'll but be that, a dumb that, story when it is. That whole summer is going to be it's going to be maddeningly annoying and insane and it's going to happen. What if Let's they win ready. it all this year? Yeah, there you go. Will he stay forever? I'm not even saying he's going to leave. I'm saying part of the process for an NBA superstar is to create mystique by unfollowing all. He'll follow, he'll unfollow Cuban. That'll hurt. Cuban will cry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> While we're on this topic, though, did you see the story about uh, Raptors player Jonte Porter? He uh, he's under league investigation. Because he was not only betting, but he was betting prop bets, parlay prop bets, involving himself. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> nice. <laughs> For real? Yeah. I thought we were supposed to bet on ourselves. That's yeah, the thing. Yeah. He's like, I got the, I'm the ultimate confident athlete. I'm yeah. placing literal bets on myself. So is this the, is it a guy who like would get uh, claim injury and leave a game? No, like they're saying he would like legitimately like miss shots or make shots like his I mean they haven't broke down uh broken down um his whole you know and he's a guy who plays like you know he plays not that much. Is he a league minimum guy? Um let's see what his contract is. I don't it know better all be overs though, right? Yeah, he's always taking the under on his game by game rebound. <laughs> that's concerning. I think that was the problem is he was taking under. I think that, it was that's oh, the only way no. to guarantee if that's himself. the easy one to hit. Yeah. Yeah, but 
I thought That's I saw unethical. something about a guy who was hitting unders, but he would go into a game for like three minutes and then leave, like claiming injury. And that might be the same guy when somebody was trying to break down. Yeah, it's here's, insane. The other thing about this is, uh, yeah, he was betting unders. Blake's right. <laughs> um, maybe you're right. Yeah, he played just. You're right. Yeah. That's okay, that's the one I said. Yeah, I think played, it was something Haralaba was. He played about. four minutes and left because of an aggravation of an eye injury. Uh, yeah. He did not score, had three rebounds, one assist, and did not attempt a three, meaning the under hit on all of the props. And there was a ton <laughs> of action on that yeah, particular prop that night. The reason for that is he has a he's active on Discord. and Because he has like a basically like a day trading company yeah. or something. Like he's involved in, I, I can give you financial advice. Yeah, for like 50 bucks a year or something. <clears throat> and then, yeah, the bet started coming in. And yeah, he would just take unders on himself. Yeah. So like it, in massive amounts. And he would go on Discord and like advise people on what the what the play was, but people knew it was him. Was he gambling on himself too? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So With they found that numbers. paper trail? Yeah. <laughs> That's a dumb guy. <laughs> Yeah, and he also like yeah he fancies himself as a financial advisor, um, and ha like would give hey here's a stock that's gonna hit tomorrow. I guess all those people get to keep their winnings. Yeah, sure. If DraftKings gets to keep the Jaguars, <laughs> the money. Jaguars money, yeah, <laughs> right? sure. He was just doing a public service. They got to keep Shohei's money. Dude, I I think the overall point is this is fucking out of control. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How many this, stories did you see before <laughs> DraftKings was on every ad break that you ever saw? There's going to be there's going to be one story like this involving an athlete every week. Compared to the zero of my entire life yeah, before that point. Exactly. So this like, video has been making its way around. Uh the one time his under didn't hit. The uh, space? Yeah. Let's see if we can play that video really quick. Yeah. Doesn't look like a guy real stoked. So this is this is Porter at the top. He shoots, trying to miss, banks it in. <laughs> and then watch it look at his face. <laughs> Uh, oops. Uh, <laughs> <damn>. <laughs> it's a twenty thousand dollar bank in. <laughs> and he, he knows he's just gonna have a full like, Discord tonight. Damn, yeah, like, damn it, John! Doing, Taylor, what are you doing? <laughs> you told us you'd hit the under on threes. Horrible bank. <laughs> oh, yeah, ugly ass. Meant shot. to draw back iron. I'm pretty yeah. sure. Next like, time you gotta uh, hit the shot clock. Oh, God, damn. I'm in trouble. <laughs> That's how bad of a player he is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he tries to miss and he makes it. <laughs> He's oh, so man. inaccurate. It's so good. There's gonna be a story like this every week. Yeah, and I've already seen some players and coaches. I think maybe even the Cavs coach was complaining that just about fans. Yeah. yeah, like Tyrese Halliburton, I think. Yeah, yeah. Upset that they're just like, yeah, they're you know you would hear it in the NFL about guys getting uh, jeered about uh, their fantasy stats, mm -hmm. and now you're hearing it about props. Mm -hmm. You know, you had to make three threes or whatever. Yeah, it's out of control. They opened the Pandora's box, and now they're just like, well, we need the money. Yeah, <laughs> so. Uh, the Bally thing doesn't help, right? No, I think that's a big mm -mm. part of it. I think it's a huge part of it that, you know, their old revenue streams are drying up. It's, yeah. it's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. It's awesome. Um, elsewhere in sports, if we're going to kill all our sports stuff right now. Sure. The NFL kickoff rule is out there, and who would think that such a small part of the game would kind of get us so excited? Like, I'm I'm actually... Well, it used to, though, right? This is very interesting to me. Back when I was growing up, I remember being, like, obsessed with, like, Eric Metcalf. Mm -hmm. I mean, you were obsessed with the idea of kickoffs in general. Yeah, yeah. you were still on kickoffs. Covering them. <laughs> Be a gunner. But it felt like like the action zone. Uh, who was the Chicago Bear? The Devin Hester. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. I Dante love Hall? I guess he was mostly punts, but mm -hmm. still. Yeah. But even like playing flag or tackle football with your friends. I mean, did you ever run a play? You would just return every kickoff for a touchdown. Yeah. yeah. You just throw. And the kickoff was just somebody throwing. Yeah, you just throw it. And yeah. Then, yeah. Yeah. It was All right, fun. let's go. It was fun. I never thought it was that big of a deal, but I saw a breakdown this morning when looking at media about this story that said 
Uh, kickoffs are only 6% of all plays, mm-hmm. uh, yet 21% of all concussions are attributed to kickoffs. Yeah. So I didn't realize that. I thought oh, yeah. this was kind of like just people being woke, not wanting kickoffs. <laughs> no, but, I mean, I... <laughs> Take yeah, all the evidence, kicking out of the game. Yeah, <laughs> that evidence has been mounting. I mean, um, being that, against concussions is woke. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that, that's true. true. Yeah, but I mean, you know, just <laughs> if you just look at it, you're running full speed, and a lot of times the other people are planted or trying to hit you back when they, you've been running for thirty yards, they've been running for ten. Guys at the bottom of the roster trying to make sure they belong, like yeah. you sell out. Yeah, yeah. It's just like the it's the closest thing football has to like putting people in a cage. When it's when it used to be that way. Now it's you know, it's touchbacks. What, like eight ninety percent of the time, eighty percent of the time? Yeah, and they've been trying to push those numbers up because they're aware of the concussion thing. Yeah. So there was really only two ways you could do this. You could eliminate them, which at one point I actually thought they might do. Which they were mm-hmm. talking about. What would they have done that? Uh you'd probably just have every team take the ball at the 20, 25, or 30. Which they kind of just do now, almost. Yeah. Yeah. But it would definitely, you would not allow, uh, be able to get an onside kick at the end. Yeah. And the second option was modify it. So you're excited about this? Yeah. I think, I think it's, it's cool. kind of weird. Oh, well, let's could... explain what it is. Can you? Yeah. So the kicker will still stay at his own 35. Um, and he will be the only one there by himself. The kickoff team will be on the opposing team's 40. And the uh, return. So uh, 15, 25 yards ahead of the kicker. Yeah. Your team is lined up. Yeah. Okay. On the other side of the field. And the return team lines up on their own 35, five yards away from them. Okay. So they're all just facing each other. Yeah. The returner is in his normal position. Um, Like goal line. Yeah. Goal line, wherever he wants to set up. And no one can touch the ball until it has entered. No one can move. No one can move. Yeah, no one can move until it enters the landing zone, which is inside the 20, uh, from the 20 to the goal line. So you have to aim your kick. Yeah. Try to pop it right into there, which is like Brandon Aubrey. In fact, didn't he kick everyone out of the end zone this year? They didn't have one uh, return. Yeah. So So what if you do that? Is it still like same thing? You go out to the 35? No, no. If it, yeah. If it lands in the end zone, the, and you let it stay there and don't try to return it, you get it at the twenty. So they're incentivizing you returning it right there. Okay. What if I boot it out of the end zone? I Over. think I think that goes to that's the thirty-five. Yeah. Okay. They're okay. trying to incentivize so, you to let them return it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Because your team is lined up at the thirty-five. Does it have to be kicked the off 40. a tee, or can you punt it? I think you still have to kick it off a tee. Your team is lined up at the 40. Mm-hmm. They're at the 35. So, yeah, why would you just give them the 35? That's the thought. Okay. And the ball goes out of, out of bounds, you get it at the 40. And the other part is the onside kick thing, which when I first heard that they were going to modify onside kicks and I had that piece of information before this piece of information, I was like, that makes no sense. The idea that you had to declare an onside kick, like, well, what's the point then? Mm -hmm. But the reason you have to declare is because now you have to go back to the old way and line up on the 35. Okay, so you'd have to declare it. Your formation would all be different. Yeah, and you can also line up unbalanced now. Would the Saints have won the Super Bowl in this set of rules? I was going to (laughs) say, that's the most famous onside kick, right? The out-of-nowhere onside kick in the Super Bowl. Yeah. So you can't do that, obviously. Which sucks, because yeah, and if you're watching, you can see it on the screen now. But yeah, it's, it's just it. The return team kind of like briefly retreats, and then turns their backs about four to five yards into their drop, and s- turn back around and start going for the uh, for the kickoff team. I think it's awesome. Yeah. Play that video again. So this is the XFL. This is a 20 second clip. Like if you're you, watching us, you're gonna have to return it just to see almost certainly how they do it. So everybody's just standing still till that guy catches the ball. Then you're allowed to move and start blocking and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's way different than if you start blocking with a 20 yard head start on each side. This is basically just a just, normal play. It's yeah. a good looking play, honestly. You know what I mean? Like this is this is just executing. It's like a receiver and a corner five yards apart at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. And Some rowdy boys throwing blocks. I like it a lot. Yeah. It, I mean, I think it's going to be awesome. And I also think 
I think NFL kickers are extremely, extremely talented, but don't really get to show it that often. So this is a deal where it's like, all right, I have a direct, like it's almost like a trick shot. Like, okay, I need to get it beyond the 20, but if it goes out of the back of the end zone, we're screwed. So ideally, if I could put it like right in the end zone or right on the one, yeah, you have to either pick it up or you're going to be taking Because if you one. let it bounce at the five and into the end zone, you take the ball at the 20 and you right? don't want to do that. Yeah. Well, the other yeah. thing is that hang time doesn't matter anymore on your kickoff because right. you're not having to gain time for your players to get down the field to, to down cover the, field. the kick. Yeah, you just, Wasn't that you like a just, Belichick you thing? Could just barely po- yeah. You can just pooch it right over the top of everyone and have it land inside the 20. You don't have to, like, launch it. And you know Bones kind of led the charge for this. Yeah. Oh, Sorry. really? Yeah, yeah, he was up there today with someone else. Like, so he's fired up about this. What do you think? Dude. Well, I think he's fired up about anything that he, Yeah, but it's just, you know, he he's got crazy put ideas. wrinkles in, yeah. The Cowboys are going to run so many reverses and weird weird plays on returns it's going to be incredible i would not be surprised if you start seeing the two-man return a little more will yeah. this cause you to actually use your good players as a returner if there's not as much of a chance that they get blown major up, major collision yeah, that's a good question yeah what yeah. about yeah, yeah they're going to use cd on an end around anyway yeah cd yeah. lamb's going to be making these plays anyway if it's a regular play the, him playing four or five more plays a game that's not crazy Probably at some point you'll see. I don't know if it'll be like the top guy, but better than an, a back of the roster guy. I thought this was a huge win for the XFL. Yeah, it is. I mean, it worked. Is the XFL they, still a thing? It's they've coming combined. Back. Mm-hmm. Okay, but the, the UFL is, and XFL are now the same. But yeah, they'll be back. But it was teased as a training ground for stuff like this, and yeah. I mean, the first chance they States got, states are a laboratory. Mm-hmm. Yeah, know, the NFL right. took one of their things. Oh, okay. What? <laughs> back to the foot. Back to my seventh, <laughs> seventh grade, Jake. <laughs> Are you in? Are you excited? Because you seem uh, uh, no. surprised that we're into this. No, I think it's going to look really weird. It is going to look weird, but the point is that before it was a play that basically was just there for them to sell spots mm-hmm. on both sides. Now we got to go to commercial break because we just did the kickoff, and now you at least get to see some hits. And I think it'll stop feeling weird after a couple months. Yeah, I mean you're right, but just. The, that first Thursday game or a preseason, whatever, Definitely. it's just going to be. Yeah, it will be weird. Really eye opening. You know what's strange about it? I know there are differences in the college game and the pro game in every sport. I can't think of one as wide as this. That's a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. I like, wonder oh, if metal college bats, will adopt bat, it. I bet they do. Metal bats, wood bats, different three point line, different overtime. But now you're like, all right, this is a fundamental change to at least whatever. How come the women's basketball has four quarters and the men's has halves? I don't know, but I don't want them. Well, I saw somebody talking about this last night. Because the thing that you hate about men's college basketball is the the free throw, the foul situation. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that would change that, but I've never really understood it. What do you mean? At the end of games, like when you're watching these tournament games, you're just like, that's why I turned off Houston A&M the other night. It's like, okay, this last 90 seconds when they're down 11 is going to take 15 minutes because mm. they're just going to foul, foul. Cause Double college, bonus. Because college players yeah. suck at free throws. Yep. Yeah. So they're like, all right, our best chance is to just send it, one of these guys to the line. They shoot 65%. That's what? One point. One two one point one five per possession or something, as opposed to letting them get an, a look at an actual shot, and it becomes an absolute beating. I don't know. Maybe the ladies just can't understand the concept of halves and they had to <laughs> yeah break it down a little smaller <laughs> for them. Oh. Yeah, that's probably it. They need more breaks. <laughs> <laughs> do you, do you, does it bother you like the one foot in bounds thing? Does it uh, the are knee touching it? the ground? Are they changing that? No, 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 but it's just differences between college and pro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The two main ones I think of is one foot in bounds and then the knee. If the knee even touches the ground, you're down. I don't think yeah. about yeah. that one too much, but I think the NFL should have a one foot rule. Mm-hmm. I, I hate seeing some like incredible athletic feet, no pun intended, and you're like, oh, well, he caught it, but this one touched the line. But whenever they do drag that back toe, it's it's special. It's sweet. And the little <laughs> the rubber pellets, rubber pellets jump yeah. up. Mm-hmm. I I, I mm-hmm. like. I think I've come to like the rubber pellets because of that. Do you see it's my fun. buddy Gene Steratore? 
get him stuck in your eye. On the he does tournament? basketball now, too? Yeah. Like, yeah he so that. he's done effing up the NFL? Like, now he's... He's a friend of mine. Oh. Dan, How was that? Dan missed this. Oh, he did? Yeah. I wonder if we could pull it up. How do you know him? Uh... Through Joe. Are you able to search something on Instagram, Rob, and just play it from there? I'll see if I can pull it for him. But then we're going to have to do like the transfer thing. No, you're going to you're going <laughs> to love this. Just give me a minute. Did we play did we play the audio? Blake what Um we... Yeah, we may have shown Joe. Okay, that's right. Yeah, when my brother was on. An episode you should still go back and listen to. Okay, yeah, I haven't yet. It's pretty electric. I did the Monday epi. So yeah, Gene's just the fan of rules. He is. Mm -hmm. He just knows all the rules. Doesn't really matter the sport. Just loves rules. Big Ten Commandments guy. Um, what else do we have? Oh, can I ask you a a really dumb college basketball question while they find that? I don't know it. This is a high, it has nothing to do with like the actual like games. Okay. Okay. Because I TiVo'd them all all this last weekend. I haven't watched it yet. Let's <laughs> let's say that you are, don't spoil you're such it, an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> He's about to watch every tournament game. Let's say it's just on his, his downtime. Uh, yeah. Racket Dan. Let's say, let's take like the top 50 teams in the country, not like the t top 50 teams in the tournament. Like if you had a ranking like FPI or whatever they do, top 50, one through 50, college basketball. So not Holy Cross, whatever mid majors. Can every player on every one of those teams dunk? Hmm. Over ninety five percent. I'm thinking somebody well your six foot fifteenth man. There's not another Trey Young out there right now. Can Trey Young dunk? No, I don't think so. That's oh, what I'm really? saying. Like, For real? If Trey Young can't dunk, then no. I didn't realize that. I didn't That's know that either. True. Like Spud Webb could dunk. I was just watching some of these teams warm up over the weekend, and I'm like, you know, yes. Uh, Did you note anyone that you thought couldn't dunk? Well, there were just there were some kids. I mean, like for example, this is a funny story. Actually, uh, I think it was Purdue. Purdue had a kid, and this was only a story because I think the over under in Purdue's game or the spread was like twenty, and or twenty and a half or whatever, but. The kid had not taken a shot all game. He was a walk-on uh, all season. And he got into the game. In, a, a kid for Purdue. Yeah, with like 10 seconds left. They're up, whatever, 19 or 20, and they find him in the corner, and he just rips one, and it blew the, blew the spread for a lot of people. And his bench is going crazy. And I looked at him, I thought, I bet he can't dunk. Okay. But I don't know. Sometimes you'll I mean you'll see White Cole, guy. Cole Beasley. Yeah, but like you'll see Cole Beasley at 5'9 or 5'10 mm -hmm. like hanging his head on the rim. Right. It's like, okay, well you are a le legit elite athlete. So I wonder Yeah, if, if you're at the end of the bench of the a top 10 team, are you yeah, like you could be You may have to go scholarship players. Trey Young can dunk. He can? Yeah. Okay. I'm watching a video of Trey Young dunking. It's erroneous information. Well, Josh has never seen a game. Because they'll have a couple walk-ons <laughs> just fill out the roster. Yeah, even the good teams. Yeah. Which is always surprising yeah, need, to me. Because you, need you run out of scholarships. Yes. Yeah. Like, can Mark Titus dunk? That's what I, exactly what I was thinking. I was thinking of, of Club Trillionaire. All right, well. What about uh, in women's college basketball? <laughs> <sure>. <laughs> Candace Parker could dunk as a high school sophomore. That's why she's on TV now. You tired of Caitlin Clark? Uh, no. I mean, we talked about her a little bit yesterday. I know, but they won last night. So, what no, do you I'm mean? saying it's not. So we're going to get more. It's not going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, I don't people want to see her go out on top? I haven't looked at the bracket. Is there any chance that she runs into? When does she run into? LSU? Yeah, Trey Young can easily dunk. Josh, that was a terrible. Sorry, point. <laughs> bad point. Bad point on mine. Is he doing like windmill? <laughs> yeah, he's throwing lobs to himself. <laughs> Three sixty. <360. laughs> yeah. Look at this. Okay, he LSU, won the dunk contest earlier this year. If LSU and Iowa both win, they will play in the Final Four. Or that's fun. Yeah, I think so. 
would have preferred the national championship. But although Mulkey probably doesn't see uh, Caitlin Clark as a threat, as she is white. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, how's that Mo- uh, Washington Post article? We get it yet? No. Are we still doing the video or no? It's not on the page. Yeah, whatever. Okay. I looked at it. Okay. Right. Gene Steratore narrated a controversial play for my flag football team. Like, they got him on Cameo or something, sent him the footage. Really? Yeah. Text it to me. I'll see if I can find it. Yeah, I, I don't want to slow down the Got show both feet down. Video. The yeah. mo. Yeah, like, uh, we got we had a terrible call against us, like, uh, were the feet in or feet not in, and he, like, sat there and went through the whole video and, like, broke it down and overturned the call. <laughs> That's awesome. I know. <laughs> it was really fun. Yeah. Now you love Gene Steratore, huh? I've always been a fan. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, We've always been tight. So I have one more thing I wanted to bring up, but I thought it might also be in the news. Okay. Because I think these guys are uh, special guests, and uh, when I say special, you can use that term however you want that I'm thinking of it. Um, the P. Diddy thing. Who's going to tell me what's going on here? <laughs> um, it would have been in the news, but we can do it now. Um, it's pretty simple. He's been getting away with too. sex crimes for a very long time. Yeah, you guys remember Danity Kane, right? I remember the name. The Making the Band uh, oh, MTV show from yeah. like 2004. Yeah, the one that the Chappelle sketch is based on. Yeah, where yeah. Diddy had all the, like, the 16-year-old girls in a loft in New York trying to turn him into a band. Yeah. <laughs> he's a he's a, he's a sexual creep and has okay. been for a long time. I mean, these allegations are not new. He, he behaves in a compulsive fashion. It doesn't seem like he can control himself. He he has these urges, and then he has the ability to tell people, I'll make you a star if you do it, and I'll ruin your career if you don't. And he appears to put that forward to someone just about every day. Yeah, and his former girlfriend, the artist Cassie, uh, probably was the first one to break this off public whenever she said that he would you know, force her to perform with male and female prostitutes and him or she'll you know face threats Mm -hmm. um they actually settled their case but within like a week it was kind of like a tiger bill cosby situation where once that came out lots more came out there's a producer the producer filed like 150 page legal document like it's 150 pages of allegations a male producer and uh yeah saying that did he told him if you want to go anywhere in this business you better be gay for me yeah and that he would like shower in front of his. Oh, he likes bros too. Oh, he was all over the. Place. He likes everything he could possibly imagine. Yeah. And uh, is this what Cat Williams? Did he not say directly, stuff about this you know, months ago? He's been kind of like it's Cat Williams is high on the idea that there's a general Hollywood conspiracy to turn strong black men gay. And this okay. is real fuel for the fire. I don't think he was ever like calling out Diddy specific. Maybe I'm hmm. wrong. No, but I don't I, think he I, did. Yeah, it was more like uh, he he was more focused on how many times you see black men on camera wearing dresses, like Medea type stuff. And he had some Wayne Brady points or something too. I think. <laughs> yeah, and he was TD Jakes taking shots at a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, and then TD Jakes got up on the whole thing because uh, yeah. there's all kinds of him and Diddy photos. Yeah. And I believe the Dallas preacher. Yeah, oh yeah, I know who he is. Like, yeah, one of I one of the lawsuits may have like said something like where they didn't name him, but like people put together who they were talking about. He's definitely in the allegations that that he's all up behind that he and Diddy have a a relationship that is sexual in nature, and they're interested in pursuing together these kinds of things. Yeah, and I saw uh, I saw a video this morning. Well, first of all, they raided his house yesterday. Yeah, he, I saw that. The De- Department of Homeland Security That's, raiding his homes in L.A. and Miami. The reason it was them is because they're accusing him of sex trafficking. So he would take young women uh, to city to city like with him and force them to like have sex with male prostitutes. I guess sometimes female prostitutes and like watch or he would be involved. And so that's trafficking. Like if you take somebody against their will, especially if they're underage – Maybe it is either way. Um, that's that becomes a homeland security issue. Okay. I, I mean, like the LA County Sheriff's Office is also involved. Um, but yeah, you see, uh, 
You see them raiding the the. It's just a wild, wild scene. And but if, as people have always said, typically once you get raided by a federal agency, it's probably too late for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like they're not showing up. Like, wonder what's in there on a hunch. <laughs> like, yeah, they're the like, guns drawn. They have dogs. It's like if they bring they bring dogs to your house, you are already screwed. Were you were you watching like the uh, the stories that his private jet was on the way out of the United States? I did not see that. Yeah, the the crack connoisseur style accounts that I follow have been blowing up my feed with that. I think that he he got it. Did he? I saw something that he had been intercepted today at like the Miami airport. Yeah, which, like which would seem but he wasn't on this private on jet. But they were saying maybe documents, documents, videos, yeah. scrambled yeah. a lot of stuff was put on the private jet and taken away. And then if you really want to go all the way into the kind of things that I, I like do. to read about on Twitter, uh, anytime something like this pops up, you know, there's like with Epstein stuff, like why was Epstein filming all those things? Partly for him, but you know, whenever he was, uh, whenever they asked the prosecutor why he didn't prosecute him more, he said he belongs to intelligence. And so that's always an angle. Anytime someone's filming other people have sex acts, you wonder, did the CIA ever tell them? Huh. Yeah, yeah. Does, did it would be have... good for us if you maybe took a couple videos, sent them over. Could be could be useful later. I mean, I definitely believe that about Epstein, but I also just think, I think this guy's just, I don't know. Maybe did did he have multiple passports? Did he have an Egyptian passport and an Israeli passport? Like no, that's, he did. I think that's a key <laughs> distinction. <laughs> But you know, I mean, what, let's see what they found. You know, what, one one really funny part of this though has been Fifty Cent, who has a long-standing uh, beef with Diddy. Okay, just can't stand him, and uh, largely because he thinks he's weird. Like there are a couple. I think of other that's reasons. born out, been born out, right? Yeah, <laughs> there's a couple. There's a couple of other reasons. Like he thinks he stole a concept for his video. He was mad whenever Fifty tried to sign Mace, and Diddy talk like talk Mace out of it. But most of the stories I read was like, this is the type of dude who hugs you from the front and the back. <laughs> 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 and you can that really an actual, see Fiddy being like, no, quote. Yeah, absolutely he's like, not. He's like, if that's how you are, that's fine, but don't bring it around me. <laughs> 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 yeah, they have, uh, they have some problems. Just the kind of another. classic homophobia that we're not allowed to engage in anymore. Yeah, mm. yeah. <laughs> Different time. All right, well, that was kind of the news. Yeah. Here's Jake with the Dumb Zone News. But this is a fish. This is a fish. Short for. Um, yeah, we just did Diddy, so let's mark that one off. Uh, let's start with the unfun story, and that is Baltimore. Mm. The ship didn't make the docks. This is one of the craziest things I've ever seen in my life as a uh, cargo container ship crashes into the Key Bridge in Baltimore, basically what connects their city. Um, the Baltimore port, one of the, I don't know, it's probably top 20 ports. What's uh, your port ranking right now? Uh, <laughs> well, I think <laughs> by volume, I think Long Beach is number one, right? That's a great port. I, I'm telling you, by volume, this is like what I hear in the background right. all day. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, actually yeah. got you know. yeah, you yeah. insider story. knowledge over here. Yeah. Like, what was that one? There, were, there was a canal that was stuffed. The Suez? Yeah. Yeah. A couple years ago, and you said that was really affecting your- the Ever given. Your home life? Yes. Yes. I, Long Beach is definitely number one. I'm going to say definitely. I think it's number one in the world, but Baltimore's up there. Not not the world, the U.S. Baltimore's up there in the U.S., um, and these ships are, you know, they're coming straight from the Atlantic. I think this is where most, Ziggy Sabaka was, right? Mm -hmm. Or season two. Season. Mm -hmm. This ship is coming from, I think, Singapore, maybe, but they're all coming in. This trade lane or shipping lane is primarily Asia to Baltimore. Interesting. And, yeah. And so uh, they make a lot of stuff over there. I've heard. Yeah. I just would think that they'd ship that to Long Beach. And I mean, I guess you still got to do some. Just if you're talking about an East Coast port, I would assume that yeah. it's doing trade with Europe, but I guess it makes sense that... Pacific Ocean is really big. It is really big, but it doesn't stretch all the way to Baltimore. I'm sure that. Uh, that it, maybe if you're doing the European stuff, you're talking more New York ports. Yeah, maybe that's it. So the video is insane. It happened about at 1.30 last night. Um, I haven't seen an update on casualties. I don't know if you guys have, um, but there were definitely, you know, there, it's a commuter bridge. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And so I know I know they had rescued two people. Could have been worse timing then, for sure. Definitely. In one thirty in the morning. Definitely. And these people, it, it didn't appear to save them at all, but there, people could definitely like kind of see it happening, right? Like I, I felt like in the video you could see the traffic sort of stop. Yeah. But then the the, <laughs> the bridge then just kept collapsing. The out whole further. thing, yeah. Yeah, six people remain missing. Okay, well. And did you say the, the boat lost power? Yeah, so at first I was like, that ship looks too tall for that bridge. Like somebody made a tr tremendous error here. But then I look, you know, you're looking at the map and I was talking to wife about it. There's really only one way in and one way out. You know, you're going into the, to the Harbor, uh, to the port. You're, there's no other route. So it had obviously already made it in at some point or, you know, it was not a mistake, but what happened, I believe, because these ships are like GPS controlled, it loses power, and it lo I think it lost power twice because they were briefly able to get it back on. It loses power a second time. So instead of going under the bridge, it goes right into a support beam. Like it is, it's only without power, it looks like, for a very pretty small amount of time, but you're in the current. You know, it's supposed to go through the middle part here. And it just loses power just long enough to where it veers over to the right with the current and just crashes into that. You know, and that's not that's a pretty narrow opening there for it to nail, but that's the thing, is these ships are controlled by satellite. It's not like some guy up there freewheeling like, <laughs> oh, see if I yeah. can get back over to the left here. He's drunk. Yeah. But this is when them computers don't work. Or maybe the satellite did this on purpose. Yeah, mm. the suggestions shut in, down uh, our trade. in various group chats were... Initially, it was, yeah, well, this is a real shot at the people who uh, who think the robots are going to take over. And I'm like, are you sure? Yeah, this might be <laughs> they're, they're the doing start a great, of it. They might yeah. be doing a great job. The response there was maybe it was a suicidal robot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. That's Wanted a, robot virgins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that quite a bit. Nothing has ever been plugged into this. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that's fun that is fun and then the other story Still which... has the plastic protector in there and the <laughs> yeah. that you can break that's key this is the most disgusting robot talk i've ever heard <laughs> so uh when we were gone uh when y you were gone right i was gone you guys were here did you miss me I did. Well, this is a couple weeks ago. We, we missed the story. Um, so we had the doctor, Dr. Irwin, who delivered the surrogate gorilla baby mm -hmm. at the Fort Worth Zoo. We had her on the show. It was uh, the first. TC and I were here for that one, too. That's true. And she delivered your baby. She delivered and my baby. And we were baby. wondering, was there a mix-up at the hospital? <laughs> because your boy is a little. She delivered the girl, so oh, we're okay. safe there. Damn. <laughs> but uh, he's a little wild. The baby man. gorilla. Uh, Jamila? Yeah, Jamila. TC said he thought about this. I don't know that I really thought about it. But the mom doesn't want the kid. Yeah, you talked I've you've talked to me about this. Okay. Because so it wasn't a natural birth. It wasn't a natural birth. They, yeah. And they tried very hard with two other gorillas. That's the way we are with our kid that was uh, C section. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's rough. You don't get the vaginal mucus. You're not. You're not accepted by the family. Yeah. They. Uh, they've had a human with her 24 hours a day, and I was actually going to go to the zoo on Sunday to do the, a shift, but the weather was <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Just. <to laughs> Yeah. A little nursing action. <laughs> kind of miss the baby. But uh, <laughs> Miss your kid when it was a baby. <laughs> He's got my eyes. <laughs> Take those out of his mouth. The uh, the zoo was like promoting, like, this is the last week you can see Jamila. We didn't end up going on Sunday because the weather was... Why? Trash. What are they going to do to it? Put it down? <sighs> the no, reverse they've dam. got a... Uh, they're sending it to Cleveland. Which is... Not that far from Cincinnati, where gorillas go to die. Why? 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 I know the Cleveland Zoo is like top notch. I guess wait, they wait, think. Unlock it, the door. Whoa, whoa. They have a thing called Monkey that. Island. Auto play. There. Does that happen everywhere? Monkey Island. Yeah, Monkey Island was the thing because we do a field trip there every year, and you get to go look at Monkey Island. Dude, that is so Cleveland. 
They don't separate them by species or anything. They just have them all there, all just the congregating. <laughs> they came up with a real original name too. Mutant breeds. I'm gonna search Monkey Island. They're smoking. If I, I'm, I'm gonna search ready. Monkey Island. What a sentence. They well, let me uh, get off my Shohei wife search. You guys, <laughs> pretty impressive, that. right? I think they're sending her to Cleveland because there's a gorilla there who's known to be good about this kind of thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Cleveland's there. known for having especially nurturing mothers. I'm sure you're aware. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For sure. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just in general, regardless of the father's participation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh wait, permanently closed. Monkey oh, you don't closed? say. Oh man, buddy. The, I on, thought on the map future. it says closed. Cleveland Zoo announces significant expansion of the rhino habitat, and I think maybe that took over Monkey Island. Oh no, the rhinos ate the monkeys. The uh, monkeys formerly housed on Monkey Island now reside in a nearby habitat that offers them more space to climb. That's good. That feels like a PR play. Yeah. While Monkey Island was a popular exhibit when it first o- opened, the structure was more than 85 years old and no longer met our internal standards for am- animal habitats. Huh. Yeah, here's Monkey Island in 1937. So Dan was watching some primates be abused. In the entire <laughs> the Planet continent. of the Apes thing makes a lot more sense now, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I have told you, what, that I like Planet of the Apes? Uh, it's more than like. Um, I'm stoked on Planet <laughs> of the Apes. Are you really? You named the dog after You didn't it. know this? No. Cornelius looked like, he looked like an actor with an ape costume on from Planet of the Apes. He looked like the uh, guy who played Cornelius. <laughs> his poodle. Yeah, it just looked like his eyes were behind a mask it, it, <laughs> when when he was first born. And yeah, well, let's be honest, right. you were probably naming the dog Cornelius, no matter what it looked like. Maybe, maybe Zaius. Oh, classic mm. for Doctor Zaius, of yeah. course. I've never seen it. The original Planet of the Apes. I wonder if I should say you should see it. It's I not mean, as I've, good as I've the seen, Wahlberg one. I'll I've tell seen you that. some of it. God, the Wahlberg one is the worst in all of them. <laughs> Although, what's his name? The guy, uh, the pothead. His his was pretty bad too. You didn't like Franco's? Uh, is that who you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. James is this Frank. Cornelius? Uh, yeah, I believe that's Cornelius. Doesn't it look like a poodle? I, I was about to say. <laughs> I can kind of see it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but the story that we missed from the Fort Worth Zoo, and this is when we were all gone. Um, if you tell me they're going to name something, I'm going to be really upset. I'm going to come over there and kick your ass. I wish I had a story like that. Just to see if I would actually move. But instead, yeah, yeah. I'm going to stay here. Jake, what would you do if you flinched fast? Uh, (laughs) (laughs) That's what we need. We need our Jim Rome, Jim Everett moment. We need the moment like Jerry Springer. We need some, you know, we need... Josh to just attack TC right now. Yeah, flip over that desk. So, the the story that we missed was um, it was uh, filmed and it went viral for all sorts of reasons. It had eighty five million views on TikTok, but I think it was actually something that occurred la- uh, late last year. But the footage only surfaced a couple of weeks ago. Uh, a zookeeper gets stuck in the enclosure of a silverback gorilla. If you want to watch the video and narrate, you can. But uh, cross access tonight, a video taken at the Fort Worth Zoo is going viral. It shows two zookeepers <laughs> trapped in a gorilla enclosure, as you can see here. As reporter Janelle Forte eventually discovered, the actual incident happened a while ago. I just want you to see this part, dude. Boy, his change of direction is not very good. Boy, that thing is really Pets fast and really, really big. <laughs> really big. Elmo, the zoo's 34-year-old silverback Do you, Okay, yeah, that thing would sack keepers. the quarterback every Idiot. time, right? No, uh-huh. you could you could juke that thing. No way. <laughs> that guy, he, he couldn't turn on a dime. You're an idiot. He's got so much reach. Watch it again. I, I think he's too wide. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm saying you juke. I'm on their side. You juke, you're still in his pocket. Yeah. yeah. His arms are very long. I think I could step up in that pocket. Can you pull the audio down and just because I just want to watch the yeah the, yeah uh, there's more though I'm sure you see this is where this. she tries to take off look at him oh no it's the same look he's running way fast. past he's trying to trap her uh, I think I think even if you're right about the change of direction so, not being elite it's just so wide that it's going to be able to swallow you up anyway so if it how gets far a hold would of you her, have to juke to get out of its path 
See, now uh, she's like bit, trying to yeah. stay over here, and then she's able to like to she's make hiding behind a tree. Yeah, and, and then she's runs trying to present to safety. But here's what, what TC and I were talking about this the other day. Like, is this the just the TikTok, or is this the okay? Um, you know, there's there's a the the is it glass just super reinforced glass yeah uh there's just pe- glass. people watching some people start praying but the debate that we were having was if you saw in there there were multiple little kids like with their face up against the glass and their dad's there with them other people are just filming yeah watching that thing just tear a limb and I'm off like, of- dude that kid looked like he was about six or seven and it's in my mind i'm thinking i want to see what happens here but I'm willing to take one for the team and get my kid away from watching a grown woman be beaten with her own limbs to death and then have her entrails eaten like while you, while you watch. A kid, never he's never going to forget that. Yeah. His life is completely, at that moment, done. Traumatized. To put it mildly. Yeah. And I don't think I have the capability to morally argue the other side, but I'm just letting you know if it's me. I'm going to let it ride. <laughs> yeah, that kid's really, yeah, he's got popcorn. Yeah, He's, he's yeah. fired up. He's cheering. Yeah. Who was he cheering for? That's what we don't know. Which side? <laughs> yeah. He was kind of pissed. He had the under. He's just cheering for nature. <laughs> I uh, I do wonder how badly those zookeepers would have been torn limb from limb if the people weren't praying loudly in the background of mm-hmm. the video. Okay. Mm-hmm. It, 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 don't know it didn't help. I'm sure that it did. Look how big he is, though. My God. <laughs> That's the Fort Worth Zoo? Yeah. You could go uh, see that bad boy right now. Late last year. But yeah, I just... And so how did that video just now come out? I think it was somebody who used to work there. Ooh, whistleblower. Yeah. I believe it is a whistleblower the situation. Maybe the uh, Christian filmer was kind of trying to time this to pop for the holiday service. Mm-hmm. Easter mass. Big Easter thing. Get a couple extra. Let it go. Maybe kind of like that, uh, the new Nathan Fielder show. Anybody else watch that? Yeah. I'm interested. He was the whistleblower. Yep. Got that video? Yep. Is that the one with uh, Jules? Yeah. Yeah. Emma Stone? Yeah. That yeah. Is her Stone. Name. I you don't know it. actresses' names. Yeah. Although I don't know a lot of actors' names either. Just don't know names. Wasn't sure if I liked the end. I kind of like. Well, why don't you just spoil it for everybody? Yes. Yeah, yeah, well, well, say what happens I, in the I'm last episode. I'm not sure I like the end. Well, keep going. It was great throughout, but then the end, I just wasn't. <laughs> I like I'm it. not going to spoil it. I, I'll counterpoint. It was very I love the ending. <laughs> <laughs> what was the video you just played? Is it the same one? Yeah. Okay, I thought I saw like a mashup really of a, a kid running. <laughs> Can they superimpose uh, Felix Jones to compare the speed? It's yeah, a good it, point. Yeah. I wonder if what are they, I wonder what they have at the Perot now. Hopefully, still Felix Jones. There's no way. No. Uh, they have the soccer. The couple soccer players. Boo. <laughs> Uh, including one in a wheelchair. A soccer player in a wheelchair? Yeah. This is what you what? want. Well, I can outrun that. Brooks did. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> He's like, I want to take on that one. <laughs> Not kidding, though. All the little kids did pick the wheelchair person. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to rack an easy dub here before we <laughs> like <to> win. <laughs> My kid loves to win. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. There's your news. The dumb oh. zone news. You Life. son of a bitch. <laughs> <Bad. laughs> Subscribe. He's been waiting for 20 minutes to hit that. I know. My finger. I got carpal tunnel. <laughs> God. The dumb zone presents. There's one thing I enjoy. Today in history. And here I am taking it away. It's pretty good, though. I got to give it to you. <laughs> well, you enjoy the 9 11 memorial in front of a Tex Mex restaurant, and you can now look at it. That's true. Right behind me. There it is, right there. So instead right. of staring at me, you can stare at the thing you drive by every day. When I stare at you, I forget. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm. Just a couple feet up. Yeah. Which we'd, we'd like you to, to never, do. never, oh. preferably. Uh, let's pull this out. That's what he said. Like a wiener to a lady. Like a little cocktail shrimp. Although, it could be to a guy, too, as Diddy has taught us today. Mm-hmm. You don't have to just pull your wiener out on ladies that un- that don't suspect it. Uh, Tuesday, March 26th, we're recording this live to tape and to video. Are we backing it up, Blake? Just in case yeah, at we the got- end you're like, oh, man, my computer. No, it only happened once. We're triple-backed, baby. 
So, on this day in 1917, the first U.S. team to ever win the Stanley Cup was this very day. Who was the first U.S. team to ever win the Stanley Cup? Lord Stanley! Ah, the great Lord Stanley. Lord Byron Stanley. See, the problem here is... I wonder if it's even... I know the, the original six, but I wonder if there was some other... Would, you know. would he actually try to trick Jake on this question? Yes, of course. It's it's, it's like it's something like the Grand Rapids racquetball team or something stupid, but no, I'm going to guess Detroit. Uh, it was the Seattle Metropolitans. So you're wrong. Mm. You're so off. Would any of them make the fourth line of the Stars today? Of course not. <laughs> I actually learned about them uh, when the Stars were playing the Kraken last year. Why? It was a playoff series. So you're just doing a little reading up on Seattle hockey history? They mentioned it on the broadcast, and I was like, that's interesting. I wonder if I can get a like a vintage shirt. What is that logo? <laughs> look like a bunny. I know. <laughs> that's why I wanted one. <laughs> On this day in 1937, Crystal City, Texas, erected a statue of Popeye. The sailor? The sailor man. Not Jones. No. Because uh, they're stoked on growing spinach. Oh, really? In Crystal City, Texas. That makes a lot more sense than Ireland having a 9-11 memorial. Yeah. What about the Barack Obama statue? You like that? In Ireland? Yeah, have you seen the rest stop? No, I guess not. I guess that's just my algorithm. That shouldn't it be in Kenya? Once a week. <laughs> yeah, show me the long form. On this day in 1992, a judge in Indianapolis sentenced former heavyweight boxing champion Mike Tyson to six years in prison for raping a Miss Black America contestant. It's actually how I learned about the concept of rape. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because uh, I think I heard it. I don't know what. I feel like it must have been Kiss, but... Whatever my mom was listening to in the morning on the way to school, and you said 92, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, Kid Craddock just stopped down to explain what rape is. Well, yeah. no, For all I, you kids out there. I heard uh, I heard that Mike Tyson had raped somebody in the in one of the news segments or something, and I, my mom uh, was approached by the teacher after school, and she was like, you know, um, I don't know what, what happened here. It's not a big deal, but he was – he was telling everyone all day that Mike Tyson had raked somebody. Raked. Yeah. yeah. I was like, what did he just hit him or what? Like sideshow. I mean, isn't that what Tyson does? Yeah. He hits people. Yeah. And I don't know why that was the time to explain the difference. No, it was, it was actually forcible sex. <laughs> yeah. Why couldn't you be like, uh, knock it off? Just don't say that again. Maybe, maybe she didn't explain it at that time, but I know that that happened. That Pretty strong bounce back. Yeah. Because he's like the, beloved. All time. Oh, yeah. Got he also farm. kind of made... Remember when he got a face tattoo and we thought, that's the craziest thing anybody will ever do? And, and now, like... Parlayed that into... Face tattoos are like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Everybody has one. But that's a huge, huge bounce back. I mean, that's forcible rape. Yeah. Not like a civil suit. Yeah. He served his time. He hasn't did, done it again. Did prison time. I think that this should be more common. But he also, what, rape? No, not rape. <laughs> <laughs> People are redeemable. We can get better. It's great if we can get better. Can't it really wait. is. That's Can't what Mike Tyson's mysteries are all about. <laughs> if we let these people back in society when they're rehabilitated, we'll have less rapists. People will have a path forward where they know, if I just learn to never rape again, I can be m positively mentioned on the dumb zone 20 years from now. <laughs> And on this day in 1997, the bodies of 39 members of the Heaven's Gate mm. techno-religious cult who committed suicide were found inside a rented mansion in big day, California. Big, big yeah. day for Nike. The guy, Yo, renting, the guy renting them the mansion uh, actually had a pretty big renting career. He was renting to two of the 9-11 hijackers. Really? I'm sure it had nothing to do with the Central Intelligence Agency. Back to you, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> in today's birthdays... Oh, did I ever do that one off the email? I don't think I did. Should I slide in a uh, listener, or we'll just do this one tomorrow? Go for it. Their birthday happened today in history. Matt Schoolfield. 
All used to be a school field. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, wait. This guy wants to wish him a belated birthday because he was in Germany. Well, I mean, they have birthdays there. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't let it's you different celebrate. different calendar. No, they're, they're too, too They celebrate. just don't want anyone to get too excited. Yeah. <laughs> Got to keep a lid on it's it. It's been an yeah. issue before. <laughs> He said, thanks for giving off goat vibes and not broadcasting, broadcasting like an NPC. <laughs> I gotcha. Y'all keep bringing the Liddy each day. Uh, I lost him. You want to help us out? NPC is a non-playable character. Oh, okay. So it's like the yeah. character you come across in a video game that has like two lines and no existence outside of those two lines. Okay. So very narrow. Yeah. I like it, though. Elsewhere, we got Uwe Blob is 62. I only mentioned him because I used to read Uwe Blog. That was a good one. I remember that. That doesn't exist anymore, does it? No. But it was all about the ticket, right? Or I think some was. Some was, yeah. I don't know. I like to read about me. It's one of the best topics. We're starting to learn that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Every morning. Write more about me. Make me trend. Uh, Von Miller, 35. That'd be great. Did he just get in some trouble? Yeah. Uh, he was accused yeah. of uh, something not far from here, in within the Dallas city limits. But uh, I believe that he was... Yeah, Dallas. He had to surrender himself to Domestic the Domestic violence. I think it all worked out. Like, I, I don't think the Bills, like, suspended him for a second. And I think, have the charges been dropped? Well, that certainly means nothing happened. Yeah, that's fine then. Everything's great. Yeah. John Stockton is 62. Mm. Another great. COVID. I feel like he's his rep has changed. He was always an asshole Since though, retiring, right? Wasn't mm-hmm. he? Yeah, he does not so. like rap. He calls it crap. I think he I think he's always been kind of known as a But you know, he's a he's a Hall of Fame basketball player, so what do you expect? But he was claiming that basically the media was hiding that hundreds of athletes a day were dropping dead from the death from the vaccine. <laughs> Is that true? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's like huge anti-vax. Yeah. He was just like no. Just I meant not, the, I the media would love to oh. to hide that. I would hide it. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would too. Just because I'm a Fauci butt, butt boy. boy. Marcus Allen is 64. Me and Marcus Allen went over to see Nicole. Mm-hmm. Mm. Did he tag Nicole? Heard a knock at the door. He did. Have been wrong. That the thing. Yeah. Eminem was factually accurate all throughout that verse. Hey, how come we haven't talked about C.D. Lamb and his babies? Save that. Write that down. The drop? No, he's like, <laughs> isn't C.D. Lamb in, in uh, I think this is something else that happened on my vacation. I haven't heard about this. C.D. Yeah. Lamb has yeah, multiple children? Boy, I'm probably... I think there was a Black Sports Online post about it. Uh, Push or... a T, write a song about it? <laughs> But it might have been Trayvon Diggs. Adonis is your son. Is it Trayvon Diggs? I it's think it's Trayvon, Trayvon Diggs. Diggs. Sorry, CD. Yeah, that's... <laughs> yeah, we've no... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I can tell the difference. <laughs> well, I just remember it was one of the top uh, Cowboys. I mean, you knew something was going on there whenever Micah and Trayvon went on that podcast. And Micah was clowning CD because he's like... Or, uh, damn it. Trayvon. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I can tell the difference. You did it first. Yeah. Uh, was clowning kind of Trayvon because he's like, I can never get a hold of this guy because he changes his number every two months. <laughs> <laughs> now it was CD that had a burner. Yeah, two, or two phones on draft. Grabbed draft one from his yeah. girlfriend's. Yeah, who was Trey Young's ex? I believe that's true. It's yeah. a big Trey Young podcast. Yeah. How many thoughts could there be in the Norman area? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. She's just desperately trying to get out. <laughs> yeah. Paige Spiranak is 31. The uh, golf hot. The world's hottest golfer, they say. And uh, they say she, she may be in Happy Gilmore 2, which has been announced. It's going to happen. Straight to Netflix? Have you heard about it? What? I'm pretty concerned. Did you just say Happy Gilmore 2? You bought that? What? She's not in it? It doesn't exist. It's not going to exist? It was it's just like a me. girls thing. Oh. <laughs> I thought there was going to be a Happy right? Gilmore too. I would have enjoyed it. I no. was excited that there was going to be. I just saw. <laughs> Son of a bitch, you may be right. 
Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah. I saw are, that and it are, was so stupid that I'm like, no way. I still think it's You fake. think Adam Sandler's above it? No, I think I still think this is fake. He's got to make a lot of movies for Netflix. This ain't happening. No. I like you know, five like, a year. This will not happen. As soon as Carl Weathers died, they just kicked her out. Man, we should probably do... Let's get the gang back together. For Carl. Let's yeah. do it for Carl. I, don't, I, I see that he said that to Dan Patrick. This ain't happening. The guy who played Shooter McGavin says happening, and I have well, that, paid him for a cameo, so... That guy has been in so much trouble over <laughs> the past 15 years. So why do you insist on being wrong and then just doubling down <laughs> and saying... It ain't happening. <laughs> he uh, responds to you with a triple down. Listen... I think Video Man is I enjoying Googling Paige Spiranak. Yeah. <laughs> Never heard of her before now. You hadn't? No, he oh. hasn't. Video Man hasn't. I'm sorry for thinking you might have gotten sacked. I was wrong, but I still, this premise just looks so stupid. There wasn't a cart girl in the original movie. Let's see her take a swing. You know, you know I, she's I actually, need, she hits bombs. I need some help with my short game. Yeah, let she's me, actually like a good golf. Spirinac. She's extremely good. Yeah. How do you know that? Because I've seen her, I've seen her put up videos of her playing. I think I eventually muted her because I was just like, I can't be looking at this all the time. Because I, I just love golf too much. Yeah, yeah I just love golf. Too excited about golf. Yeah, but no, she's that much time. She's legit. I think at some point she was at least on some level of tour. I think. I'm just gonna disagree with you. Okay, you could probably beat her. I, I don't mean that. I'm just saying anyone can look <laughs> good in a clip. You know, she's not gonna post her misses. Uh, I could definitely not look good in a clip. <laughs> Jessica McClure is 38. She played on something called the Developmental Cactus Tour. Oh, that's big. Mm -hmm. uh, Huge. She, she played in professional golf, even if it was at a very low level. Sweet. Jessica McClure you did not You just said play. you disagree. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I'm trying to claw my way back here, bro. <laughs> All right, here's take 78. Try to hit the fairway this time, Paige. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Don't show the shot. Let's just show her, and that then we'll post this to online media. No, yeah. you, you can. Real golf heads can just tell that the yeah you know, the hips, her elbows are in the exact right place. Yeah. It's a great swing. Jessica Mc, Jessica McClure is baby Jessica who fell into a well. Mm. She's now thirty eight. Wow. She lost all her money on car washes. Josh, you're old enough to remember bullshit like that. Oh yeah, that was a big deal, especially homeschool years. That was on TV nonstop. Baby Jessica in the well when that was going down. You were homeschooled? Yeah. Do you guys know what a grift homeschool is? He was done with his homework by like 9.30 a.m. I just think that shows what a grift regular school is. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. If you, just, if you just get up with your parents Dude. or they go to work at 6 and you just do your work, then you have the whole day to yourself to just ride your bike around a vacant neighborhood with no other children around. Okay, so let me ask you this. In the, I'm going back to Happy Gilmore too. In the Happy Gilmore <laughs> 2 thing that you saw, did it not say like, because I just saw like an image and it was retweeted by Ballsack. So I thought, there's no way this is real. The one I saw said, young chubs would be played by Charlie Woods. In. There's no. <laughs> I'm there's whoa. Just, so in on There's that. just no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're <laughs> saying there's Shut no up. way? There's absolutely the, a way. The I Charlie guess Woods right, would, but <laughs> Like Tiger's going to let him do that. He's his own man. He's like 13. Yeah, well, there you go. They grow up so fast. If he's a woman, Tiger would have been hitting on him by then. That's right. So, as, as long as it was a neighbor that he had known since she was eight. Definitely the most shocking part of the book. Yeah. Although, I'm st we're still rooting for him. Come on, Tiger. <laughs> <laughs> he's like Tyson. He's changed. Right. He's He's fine. Uh, Nancy Pelosi is 84, Jake. Mm. Jake. Are they real? <laughs> no, they're 40. <laughs> yeah, no, they're not. Still, uh, but you like one them. last thing, video man. <laughs> are we going back to Happy Gilmore? No, no, no. The first right. thing I think of is obviously, are they real? <laughs> the second is, uh, is it the start of Black History Month? The kneeling in the dashikis. Yeah, that's one of my favorite government photos related. So good. That was uh, George Floyd. I think I really I think it might be. Was, was it her George, husband that, that was the response the to George yes. Floyd? Yeah, yeah. But the yeah. guy was that offended by the photo. I guess it was. Yeah, I think it was. 
They all took a knee in the... There's a photo of her, <laughs> like, uh, marbled floors of Congress. Her and Chuck took a knee. Yeah. Check this out, Dan. She's got, like, a... <laughs> she's got a dashiki, like, some African garb. The kente cloth. Yeah, and she's just out there kneeling. It's the most racist yeah, photo. So so <laughs> <laughs> and they're all so old that they needed all their aides to help them kneel yeah, down and yeah. help them get up after uh, Little hand. <laughs> Because those when everyone was kneeling. <laughs> <laughs> Look how good that is. And they did it for the exact same amount of time that they were kneeling on George, <laughs> on George Floyd's, Floyd's neck. neck. So that's yeah. that's how you know it was <laughs> honoring him. That's Schumer behind her, right? Yeah. This is why I can't these identify are, with any party. These are the people who run our government. <laughs> this is, I mean, I identify exactly with this party. That's, this photo represents my beliefs precisely. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the dude behind her. Did you say this already? Holding that picture? No, yeah, that's, that's not Schumer. He's got oh, glasses okay. on. Um, but yeah. Schumer loves the readers, though. Oh, that's a good point. Richard Dawkins is 80. He's wearing a mask, so it's hard to tell. Evolution. That's right. Uh, a world-renowned atheist. Yes. Jonathan Groff is 39. He was a detective in Mind Hunter. Great show that should have had its final season. He's also gay. Mm -hmm. And he is the, uh, or at least was, the boyfriend of Zachary Quinto, mm. who was in The Slap. Oh, yeah. Mm. That's right. And I didn't know Zachary Quinto was he's, uh He's the one that slapped, right? Yeah. They walk yeah. amongst us. He was us. Spock. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Curtis Jackson, probably not thrilled about that. No, 50. <laughs> not be, not be cool. Danielle Bergoli is 21. Oh, yep. Just 21? Yep. Now that it seems Dr. like that was so here, long ago. Would you like to see Danielle Bergoli on, uh, and listen? If you're listening, it's, you'll enjoy this uh, clip as well. This is the Dr. Phil Catch Me Outside you Girl. You just video. take it and you don't consider that it belongs to someone else. No. He's an argument asking for it. You don't leave your keys. In a part in someone's room when they've stolen cars before, like you asking for it. Good point. Mm -hmm. Very good point. Um, so, what do you think is going to happen when you happen to steal somebody's car that disagrees with that and decides that they're going to drop a hammer on you and <laughs> prosecute you to the full extent of the law? Then I do my time in jail. Jail ain't nothing. That's what I always do, and they never catch me. Ain't nobody going to catch me. Because you're too streetwise? Yup. And all these hoes laughing like something funny. She's talking about the audience. She's like they're laughing at her. Did, did you say the, the, the hoes are laughing? Yep. So the audience are a bunch of hoes? Yep. <laughs> Why are the clubs yes, so Yes, we are. Catch me outside. How about that? Catch you outside? What does that mean? What I just said. <laughs> you dumbass. <laughs> well, that's great. The best answer possible to that question. She is an what absolute I legend. I just looked it up, by the way. Uh, let me see if it was just one year. 2021, her first year on OnlyFans, 18 million. Mm. We're not going to pull that one up, video man. <laughs> yeah, who's got the sub anyway? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm her clean first and clear. I've only had one subscription, dude. All unless really you're familial is... relations with a Rangers manager, I've never subscribed to your feed. <laughs> all that really happened was that Christopher McDonald shooter. Went on a radio station and said, mm. Adam showed me the script a couple weeks ago. We hope it's happening. And then Dan Patrick said he got a text from Adam Sandler saying that next year he might have a role for him. There you go. It's happening. It's okay. happening. Guess who was right again? Dude, you guys need to stay woke. This movie's not happening. Carly Chaikin is 34. She's the sister in Mr. Robot. Mm -hmm. Larry Page I is 51. love her. Even though she's okay. small. No, wait. The... The redhead. Yeah. Yeah, I, lo I love her. Looks kind of... A little dirty. Yeah. Larry Probably, Page, co-founder of Google. <laughs> looks like she might steal from you, but you'd be cool with it. Mm -hmm. uh, Leslie Mann is 52. Not funny. Married to Judd Apatow. 
Uh, Kenny Chesney is 56. Check him out on Country Music Saturday. I never, I, I don't know that I've ever. I thought he died recently. Did he? No, that was no, Toby, Toby Keith, Keith. Mm. actually. <laughs> the other guy that wore a puka necklace. Weird. Michael now, Imperioli is 58. Now my dad. He's had a Easter nice basket. Spider from Goodfellas. Easter baskets and. Or Christopher Maltasanti. Remember how he had like a weird role? It was very short. I thought, boy, I think Michael Imperioli is too big for that in uh, the prison movie that had uh, the the tunnel digging movie. The two guys that actually escaped. Shawshank. No. Escape from Danamora. Escape from Danamora, and like late in the game, Michael Imperioli's like the, a senator or a governor or something. I'm hmm, like, I don't what remember. Are you doing here. That show. Doing that's a Ben good point. Stiller a favor. Fantastic. Produced by Ben Stiller, yeah. And directed. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a great show. Is Del Ben Toro. Stiller going to be in uh, Happy Gilmore 2? Yeah, yeah. I, I think he's... Uh, I, <laughs> I, I think he's the guy that gets thrown in the water. And Martin Short is 74. Never got it. I like the swimming sketch, but just never got it. And I like all those guys, but... I've seen him live. I have, too. Perhaps. I saw Steve Martin in Martin Short. Did you see that? No, uh, he okay. did a Notre Dame pep rally. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> did he? Did he play the leprechaun? I watched that show. Too. Did he come They're out like a... the like Jiminy Glick? And he's like, yeah, <laughs> be yeah. your best today, <laughs> or whatever. Play like a champion today. Yeah, it was Jiminy Glick impersonating Lou Holtz. It was <laughs> some of the best comedy I've ever seen. Oh, you, did you hear he has a podcast now? <laughs> Lou I think Holtz I did hear that. He has yeah. A, oh, Lou Holtz has a podcast. Yeah. I'll I bet feel like we need to. Be all over. Yeah, this. geez, why aren't we on that? I think it just started. I don't even know if it's. That feels what, like elder abuse. What if you yeah. said Dick Clark? Had just a him and a mic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like on that. Uh, born on the stay now dead, Leonard Nimoy. Oh, well, isn't that weird? The same day as the boyfriend of Zachary Quinto, who Zachary Quinto uh-huh. played Spock. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel compelled to tell you that one of my favorite bands. Uh, I think it was their guitarist had a tattoo of Leonard Nimoy's head in a lawn chair. Huh? Yeah. He just had it, uh, I think it was on his arm. That's great. It's pretty cool. Like the whole head was sitting in a lawn chair? Yeah. Did it have little said Spock's little head. feet and no, hands off the head? Or I don't no? recall. It was a long time ago. But was it like dismembered? Shout out every time I die. It was just like a little head on a lawn chair. I don't know how else to explain it. Who doesn't All like right. a little head on a lawn chair? Hell yeah. <laughs> Hot. <laughs> Victor Frankel, born on this day now He's dead. Like, where am I supposed to go? Like, he is the author of Man's Search for Meaning, which I have read. Victor Frankel was a Holocaust uh, survivor. Did you find the meaning? Not denier. <laughs> <laughs> that I know you were hoping Blake Blake was uh, getting fired up. Uh, that I was going to promote a Holocaust denier, but no, he's a survivor. If that's what I got to do to find it, I don't know if I want to know. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot better just to read the book. Oh, okay. That's what I did. A little vicarious experience. But I mean, if this guy can see beauty in the world, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. then couldn't you as well? I think I can. I really liked it. thought it was kind of deep. Oh, yeah. I didn't think it was going to be a fun, quick read. <laughs> just just some, summer beach read. Just some little short stories. <laughs> 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 it's a knee slapper. Yeah. There's a lot of pictures, too. <laughs> it's a pop-up. Uh, died on this day. We have uh, Easy e says Ooh. here, the mm. father of gangsta rap, which I always thought was young MC. The AIDS got him. Yeah, I think he probably got his role inflated thanks to the early death. Hmm. Well, it certainly wasn't Young MC. Mm. <laughs> it might have been Young MC. A little bust a move. <laughs> and then uh, died on this day in 2011. I'm sure you have uh, something planned tonight to talk to Nora about this. Uh, because me and the girls will probably be on a Zoom later tonight. Sure. Just to commemorate the uh, great life of the first woman ever to run for vice president. Okay. Oh, yeah. Is it for Um to Mondale's running mate? No, because I Ferraro's. Uh, yeah, it's Geraldine Ferraro, right? Geraldine Ferraro. Okay, is, is it? I you got it. it. You got it. 
Yeah. Who but is uh, you weren't very confident. Who is You're a lot Duk- more confident in your false information. I'm happy Gilmore. Uh, who was Dukakis's running mate? It was a dude. Can you say that? Yeah. It was a dude. I could have swore he had a no. Okay. I think we we determined that woman running mate is not a good idea. Yeah. Lloyd it's never Benson. worked. Um, Lloyd Benson was his running mate. Lloyd Benson spoke at my college graduation. Ho ho ho! I don't remember any. You take of a lot of yeah. You take away a lot of that. All right. Well, so yeah. Celebrate tonight, Geraldine Ferraro. Okay. Uh, Honey, you two can lose. Great woman. History. Really just won an served, opportunity. Really served her country well. And just uh, didn't quite get there. Trying to do the George Bush commemoration that they did and. Anyway, uh, oh, darn oh darn it! Any uh, closing remarks? We can watch the Serator video if you want. Oh, we have it. Yeah, mm. uh, might as well. We waited this long. Let's sit down and see it. That's a perfect way to close. So I much think so. This is, this is my closing thoughts. What'd you see, Gene? It's Win sixty nine, and we know that has an even more special meaning. So. 69 wins in a row, brought to you by Gene Steratore, breaking down our most controversial play. Big shout out to my man, Will McCormick. We truthfully didn't need multiple angles. I didn't even need to slow this one down. This was pretty much what we call So he will break down business. your local. Even in the officiating world, yeah. a layup call. But as I've looked at this video, <laughs> quarterback Ryan Agnew backpedals into the pocket, looks right. This is your team. Glances mm-hmm. to his left. And sees Where big Cam Duhon open right. near the goal Blocking. line. He floats a dime over top of a defensive back. And I know in your group you only need one foot to make it a catch. It also kind of that. perplexes me a little bit that those in Dallas still would like me to review what is or what isn't a catch. <laughs> but Cam, you are next level, my friend. You not only did your guys the edit this video? The first foot down. I think you they put, yeah, they put in the Des Bryant and stuff. Yeah. Both yeah. Gene did all the this editing. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Gene, yeah. Did Gene? <laughs> <laughs> you definitely need to overturn it. Gene's and if this territory. had anything to do with that 68 So he's available on, like, cameo? We all know that this was a I w. guess. I haven't talked to Will. Take care, fellas. That's Him my and Shooter ruling. McGavin both. See you yeah. soon. That's a great bit. Yeah, and Will's like, you know, that's what he does is video editing and stuff. And, yeah, he said that. I couldn't believe it. Now I can never listen to Gene Steratore without thinking. Yeah, that. you can't hate him. <laughs> no. Did you have to pay extra for the '69 joke? <laughs> you no, know, I think that I think that one might have been on the house. Gene's just rolling with the boys. <laughs> we all know that special. Yeah. <laughs> you got a man just... and a woman laying. <laughs> <laughs> I'll check the tape on that. Yeah, it was, I. Gene's my guy. All right. Well, good times, guys. Go. Uh, Go to TC's thing. TC. Hit it again. Yeah. Twitch.tv slash TC Fleming. Ranger Stream. Ranger Buddies. We're called Ranger, Ranger buddies. buddies. Yeah, we do have a name. You no. like that name? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't <laughs> just, like it. Just either. watch the stream. <laughs> we're going with, though. <laughs> Adios, mofo. What does Blake do? What does Blake do? What does Blake do? What does Blake do?